Good evening ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is the middle of the working week, it is Wednesday and that of course means we're going to be jumping in to some uh, Warframe today. Hello, 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 oh and as you can see popping up in the bottom right of my screen right now, right next to my head in fact, uh, yeah, the Sisters of Harvest trailer is coming out in 30 minutes time so we are definitely, definitely going to be watching that all together. See what details are coming out on that, but in amongst and around that, before and after, we have got plenty of Warframe to be getting on to. So hello to all of you, I see we've got Evo, we've got Nick Carver, we've got Frosty, we've got Lynn, and we've got Flame Flash all together a moment. Hello to all of you, I hope you are having yourselves a wonderful day, wherever you are in the world. Uh, yes indeed, I am excited for the uh, for the trailer. Hello Martian Noob, how are you doing? Absolutely excited for the trailer, I have no idea exactly what's going to be in it, other than you know, the Sisters of Parvos, that's kind of obvious at this point. They have said they're going to announce the date, the release date in the trailer, so we're just going to have to see what comes up in that. I see there's been some comments around 16th or 17th of July, but we'll see. I mean, they might put it in the trailer. Hey guys, it releases at the end of this trailer. You never know, they might do that. It is a holiday or something in Canada tomorrow, so they probably won't do that. But they might. Yeah, never know. So we'll just have to see, absolutely. Hello Jova, how are you doing today? So the goal of today's stream, we're going to see if we can get this sortie done exceedingly quickly while we're actually on a time limit today. What's the sortie? It is a rescue, a free roam, an assassination. Okay, never mind. Never mind. We can do the rescue, free roam. I don't know if we're going to get that all done in time, but we can try. We can try squeezing in, which means get in the squad right the hell now. We're not lingering around. We're going to get these missions done. So if you want to be joining in today, the squad should be open. Yeah, it is open, so... Bring yourselves in, or if you need to be invited, let me know your username straight away. Send me a message on here. We're going to get into this sortie as quick as we can. See if we can do it before this trailer comes out. I don't know if we can, <laughs> to be quite honest. We're going to try. We're going to try. I'm not even going to change up my loadout any more than just grabbing Wukong. Then saying that uh, Reb said Sisters will be released before Tenacon. That is getting a bit tight, if that's the case. That is definitely getting a bit tight, but we will see in the trailer in less than half an hour now. So, alright. No one's popping up, so... I'm just going to go straight for this. We ain't waiting. Ain't waiting. Are you ready to do the sortie, Frosted? That's absolutely fine. The main reason for doing the sortie is Rivens. The other stuff is really so-so in comparison. A bit of Kuva here, a bit of Endo there, sculptures you can mess around with. All of that doesn't really matter. And the chance of you actually getting any of the more shiny stuff, like a Legendary Core, is very, very low. Like, once every... what's it? Two years low? Like that? Where am I supposed to go? Has it looped me around? I feel like it's been looping me around. It's been looping me around. What is going on with this waypoint? I swear I've taken this same route like five times. Oh, now it wants to continue this way. Okay. That was confusing. I mean, was it just me who got confused by that? Yeah, it's kind of hard to speed run it when this, the uh, waypoint just decides to uh, shit itself, doesn't it? But we're going to try, we're going to try, going to try. I say it three times over because now you know I'm serious about it. I'll just let my clone go deal with them. Alright. we got to go around... Usually over here. Ow. <laughs> oh. Ross is saying they got legendary core ones. Yeah, I've had one once as well. Uh, I think I used it on a prime pod, to be honest. Oh, there you go. That's how you do that one nice and quick. I did three in the time it took this guy to do one, and that's the one with the frigging uh, rescue person in it. Okay, fair enough. That's how the game want to be, that's how the game be. Wait, 
What is this waypoint doing now? Here we go. Yeah, they are gonna just let us walk out of here. It's fine. See? We walked out. Ah, shit. Okay, that is actually a problem. Where even is the operative? It's gonna lead out. Oh, that clutch insta revive I have. Right, which way ways out, please? Okay, he teleported to the exit. That's fine. Woo! Okay. No thanks to the rest of the team. Where the hell were the rest of them? It must have been near someone, because otherwise he wouldn't have died there. Give me my gun back. Wait. Where is my gun? There it is. <laughs> okay, yeah. And yeah, very right there, Evo. Uh, anyone who's wanted to see whatever builds I'm using, you can see my Warframe, you can see my weapons. Uh, pretty much... All of the loadouts should be accessible. If you just mouse over the stream, there's a big old view loadout button. You can see anything I'm actively using on there. But yeah, that was... Uh, that was about the worst rescue mission I've seen that didn't actually fail. So... Are we going to have time? I'm go You know what? I'm going to just try the free roam mission. And if it turns out that we run out of time, I'll just abort the mission. I was saying, don't max my prime mods, not because of the endo, but because too lazy to form of things. I mean, fair enough, fair enough. I don't form a most of my gear, like, the vast majority of it. What I do form, I only form it because I need to, to reach the limits that the game's kind of asking for, really. Yo, as if it spawned me on the very edge of the map, that's different. Alright. Well, we are part way into this bounty, so this is going to save us some time. Ramago Burr. <laughs> Basically. So yeah, we'll be doing this sortie. We'll be uh, going through this as quickly as possible. Once that's done, we'll do a quick hop over to watching a YouTube because it's of course the trailer coming out and then after that is arbitrations all the rest of today's stream at least as much as we can manage so I hope you have got your grinding hat on those of you who want to join in and those of you who don't well I guess you can just enjoy a panic oh I nailed that shot Also, this is easily one of the longest bouncy missions we could have gotten, just escorting this drone. I would try some kind of mobility option, like teleporting, or switch hub, or portals. The number of times I've had the drone just completely bug out doing that, I ain't risking it. Ah, Nick, if your channel point option is used on an arbitration... To okay, that was weird. Uh, if your channel point option is used to basically try and dictate a frame for the arbitration, I am just going to straight up ignore it. Because arbitrations do not mess around on that side. <gasps> As if I joined on the very last mission. Oh! <laughs> what do you know? That's one way to skip ahead, eh? That's definitely one way to skip ahead. But yeah, not to sound rude on this one, Nick, but uh, when it comes to the arbitrations, there's not a lot of room for wiggle room. And especially if I'm given something like Excalibur, I'm just gonna ignore you. Straight up, 100%. I won't even refund the channel points if you go for Excalibur as a specific kind of, no, don't do that. Because that, that wouldn't be fun for anyone to watch. That would be an arbitration that lasts all of about five minutes and then we're locked out of it for the next 50. So, not happening. Weapons it is. I mean, if you wanna use all three, I'll try and make them work. And uh, yes, Frosty, I do absolutely have merch. It's available there on the link you can see in the chat. Uh, th this squad just didn't happen. Let's try that again. That merch includes... If I just move one thing very carefully out of the way. This lovely little thing right here. 
It's not even that little as far as uh, teacups go. One Kenjineer mug. It doesn't quite look like the logo. I know, I know. The logo's on there, but the mug itself isn't a logo-shaped mug. And that just comes down to, you know, I don't exactly have a very standard mug for a logo. There's not many places that sell a, uh, a custom mug with a bolt for a handle. Or a nut for a handle, I should say. It's not a bolt. The bolt's a long bit. The nut. And you start uh, going onto Google for something like a nutty mug, and you get all kinds of really weird results coming back, and nothing like what I'm expecting. So, you know. You just have to uh, enjoy the mug that I'm drinking from. Or a replica thereof. Are we predicting what the sorty reward will be? I was speedrunning this so fast I completely forgot that was a thing. Alright. Let's grab that. There you go. I'm just going to casually die whilst I set up the prediction. It's fine. Oh, I think I died twice. I did, but now I'm invulnerable. Ha <laughs> ha! There you go. Make your prediction. What do you think the reward is going to be? I am invulnerable for the next few seconds as well to make this even easier. Wait for that to recharge. My poor Helios Prime doing his very, very best. Thank you for reminding me, Lynn. Absolutely. It is definitely known I have the brain of a sieve at times. Uh, knockback. Wait, where'd my gun go? Oh, God. I just lost another life. That ain't great. Let's tank for a moment. There we go. Alright, someone hit him with a major slash brock. See, whoever said the sortie takes too long, you know? Whoever said that sortie takes too long? I'm going to close submissions right here, right now, because we're about to come out of here. As soon as this guy learns how to get to extraction. I've closed the predictions. We're just waiting for this guy to still figure out. Did he spawn late? He must have spawned late. Yeah, he's person number four. Come on. I can see you on the map. An entire stream can see you on the map. That's it. He's, he's figured he needs to keep moving. There we go. Hey, he got there. And we got Endo. There you go. Today's reward is Endo. Evo saying they didn't bet. Well, Evo, that's what you get for... I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It was a very quick mission. It was a very quick trio of missions, actually. There we are, then. Alright, mission complete. Let's uh, drop from that squad. That, I think, is actually the fastest I've ever done the sortie. Despite the fact we had an open world one, I somehow joined in to partway through the very last bit of the sortie mission. That was exceedingly fast. What was that, 10, 12 minutes? Including loading time? I mean, I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to complain at all on that, guys. What was your, my opinion on pre -we work Wukong? Ah, those words are hard to get out. Let me try it again. What was your opinion on pre -we work Wukong? Jeez, don't try and say that fast. And my opinion is, don't know. Uh, I didn't actually have Wukong until the rework. So, I have no opinion on him. I understand that he was bad before, so I guess my opinion is other people said he was bad, so maybe he was bad. That's my opinion on the pre -we work I can't get it out. Pre rework Wukong. That is actually hard to say. Why is that hard to say? It's not that hard to look at as words, and that it's just genuinely hard to say. Damn. Tongue twisters up in here. Thanks, Frosted. Alright, guys. We are going to be having the watch over on uh, the Sisters of a uh, System of Parvos trailer very, very shortly. It comes out in... It comes out in 15 minutes time. So we have actually got a bit of time before then. But it is coming out. 
Then saying, by the way, thank you for the rifle ribbon last stream. It was for the Kuva Shaka. Oh, ho, ho. oh, that is a nice one to get. Very nice. Very, very nice. Oh, there's our update on the screen. We got 15 minutes. I honestly did not expect the wolf, uh, the sorty to go that quickly. That's, uh, damn. Very quick. Now, talking on a different topic of things, whilst we are waiting for the video to go live, we can have a watch of that premiere altogether. A uh, quick little sneak peek as to what I have been working on. Look at this beautiful ribbon. It may not seem the most beautiful at first glance. You think, oh, hang on here. Heavy attack efficiency, great damage. Nah. No, this is actually a really, really nice ribbon for this specific build here. Giving you a bit of a sneak peek on what is coming up in the next video. So I've been looking into heavy attacks. I've had a couple of people, a number of you asking on the Discord uh, about heavy attacks. How many people were asking for that one now? Let's have a quick look here. Suggestions channel. We have one, two, three, four, five, six reactions on person asking for it. So that, I'm going to take that as well. Is that a full seven people? Make sure there's no duplicates here. Oh no, a couple duplicates. Okay, so five people, which is still more than the typical suggestion gets asked for. So this is the weapon that hit a slash proc of three million damage in a single tick. That's not uh, a small amount of damage. When you consider that a level 9999 corrupted heavy gunner has a little bit under two million hit points, to hit the three million in a single slash tick means one single second from one swing was enough to kill every single non-resistant unit in the game. There are things like Noxes which are somewhat resistant, uh, they wouldn't die straight away, but other than that, dead. And yo, Tano coming in with a Riven Raffle ticket. Let me put you onto the ticket there. You're the first one today. Tano, 4196. There we go. Just double check as well, Tano. You are definitely on PC and at least MR8, aren't you? Because you do need to be both of those things in order to be able to claim today's Riven. Otherwise, yep, you're in to win it. So yeah, this is basically the build. You know, sneak peek, there you go. That's what you get to know. It's uh, a heavy attack efficiency build using this Riven to be able to take out another efficiency mod. Because you need two efficiency mods to get to max efficiency if you're not using uh, Xenerix efficiency from the uh, Xenerix Focus School. The rest of the build altogether creates a pretty sizable crit chance. You see, you've got the 112% here, but that's just from the basic upgrade of Sacrificial Steel. Thanks, Frosted. On a heavy attack, that doubles. So this has a base of 32. That's... Is it 32? Yeah, I think this has a base of 32%. So this is bringing it up by 80%. On a heavy attack, it's going to put on another 80%. Blood Rush then is going to stack in quite a bit. Even after the nerf, it's still going to be a total of 440% of the 32%. So that's going to go even higher again. And then we've got the Gladiator Might. I uh, have a build set up for Lavos, which uses all of the Gladiator mods. So that goes up another 660% worth. Basically, that 32% becomes something like 600% crit chance. Which is absolutely ludicrous now that you think about it. <laughs> like 600% crit chance is unreasonably high. But you know, it's, it's a thing that can be dealt with a build like this. And then of course, we've got Amalgam Organ Shatter, Heavy Attack Wind Up Speed. We've got Killing Blow for Heavy Wind Up Speed. This one, that one giving us the crit damage. It gets a little bit insane. Hello Pepega, how are you doing today? Purple crits? Uh, there's no such thing as purple crits, no. If you do ever see purple damage, you're actually hitting over shields, which normally only happens if you've dealt a lot of toxin damage to a corpus unit. Otherwise, no, no, not purple crits. Instead, it's a... What's that? A triple red crit? I think that's actually a quadruple red crit. Yeah, quadruple red crit. If you're asking, what would that 3 mil damage get to after the nerf? So after Blood Rush here gets nerfed, that 3 mil damage would instead be about 2.7 million. Which is still enough to one shot a 2 million hit point level 9999 9 corrupted heavy gunner on the steel path. That's with the steel path modifier adding in that two and a half times. 
this with raw, raw did yeah, improve the damage there, but this with raw, no viral, no one, nothing else, is enough to one shot. And I think that is absolutely ludicrous. <laughs> yeah, just absolutely should not be a thing. Even after the Blood Rush nerf, it's still going to be able to one shot level cap corrupted heavy gunners. I. You, you can't tell me that melee is in any way overly nerfed in the upcoming patch when that's the level of strength we can pull out, you know? There's no way it's overly nerfed. In fact, it might not be nerfed enough, quite frankly. Melee still doesn't have to deal with issues such as ammunition, still doesn't have to deal with reloading, still doesn't have to deal with uh, self-knockback in the vast, vast, vast majority of cases. Don't give them ideas? I mean... I could give them ideas all day long, you know? DE aren't exactly known for taking our ideas too thoroughly on board, are they? I mean, they'll take a bit here or there, like, you know, they'll took on the idea of that one guy who complained about Universal Medallions applying universally. So they, they do listen to some ideas, but yeah. <laughs> I don't know if they've heard any of mine yet, let alone taken any Another on board. Another satisfied customer. Yo! DBL Barrel Shogun, I think that's what that says. Thank you very much for following the channel. Glad you're enjoying yourself. And Lynn has come in and grabbed themselves a Riven Raffle ticket. So let me just update that as well for you, Lynn. There you go. You are on the ticker as well. Now we are about nine minutes away from it going live. It being, of course, the upcoming video. Let's switch on over to having a look at that page there, I think. Let me just get that page up. Fantasy chat. Nah, we don't have the chat there. We can have a look at it. Evening DBL, how are you doing today? Uh, let's see. I did set this up to be able to switch over. Let's see if this switch over just works. Oh my god, it worked first time. What'd you look at that? There we go. <laughs> now you get me even larger on your screens, guys. So yeah, we are waiting for this trailer to come out. It comes out in seven minutes' time. We are very, very nearly there. And what do we think is going to be in this? What do we think we're going to see in this update trailer? Obviously, we're going to see the release date. We're going to learn more about the titular Sisters of Parvos. What are we really going to see? What are we going to sink our teeth into? That's what I want to know. Because it could be anything, you know? Large Ken. <laughs> I mean, I can make it even larger if you really want me to, Nick. I can make it even larger. Are you expecting more grind? I mean, it's Warframe. Warframe without the grind is platinum, right? You know? Space shanties are... Uh... I mean, don't get me wrong. The space shanty, it was alright. The um, introduction of it, I was a bit like... Mm, but really though? I... Eh... I wasn't a fan of its use in the quest. It felt like someone created a sea shanty and someone created a quest line and then they went, wait, where do I put the shanty? And so they just created a spot for it. That's what it was. Lindsay, I'm getting to get hyped to get rid of my current lich as soon as possible. Why do you think I killed my one the other day? <laughs> Aside from, you know, the whole ribbon being taken. That was definitely a good reason to kill the lich as well, but yeah. Gara wants to see how the Lich works in Railjack. That is a good question. I do wonder how they're going to make that work. Are we going to have like a proper Railjack fight and board their Galleon? Or is it just going to be a case of, hey, your Railjack gets you to the mission and now it's basically a ground mission where they're guaranteed to spawn? We don't know. We'll just have to see. Hello, Turkey. How are you doing today? I think we're going to see Excalibur. I mean, yeah. Excalibur is the poster child of Warframe after all. Bigger Ken till it starts. This is as big as the Ken's going right now. Come on, guys. Come on. We want to keep an eye on this time. We've got five minutes. Apparently, the uh, YouTube chat here. I don't know how well you guys can read it on your side, but it's just screams of Clem at the moment. Oh, these poor, poor YouTube people. They don't even have a praise Clem mode, do they? We do. We do. Is this the Sisters Trailer Waiting Room? This is basically the Sisters Trailer Waiting Room, sure enough. Yeah, absolutely. 
We're going to be watching it all together. We all react together. No, wait, that's not how it goes. Eh. <laughs> there we go. Nick's found the Clem emotes. There it is. Praise be unto Clem. That's what we're looking at. Now, I'm actually the subject of emotes. We, as a channel, do have the ability to bring out some more emotes to you guys. In fact, uh, Twitch recently changed the rules behind the scenes for this channel, and we can have a lot more emotes. Also, look at all of those Clems go up the screen. Thank you, Evo. <laughs> I don't remember what the limit is, but you can put quite a few emotes. I've made sure all moderations are turned off and just says, spam emotes, it's fine. But yeah, we do have quite a few emote slots actually available on this channel now. Introduced because reasons, I guess. So if you do have any recommendations for emotes, if there are any that you would like to see added to the channel, the best place to put it is down into the suggestions channel over on the Discord. So if you want to see a particular reaction, if you want to see a particular style of emote, anything like that, let me know in that channel there. And, yeah, we'll look into it. They're saying we need a Foreman Glaive Lavos emotes. I mean, isn't that basically just half of my stream at some times? I do use the Foreman quite a bit. I would sometimes almost consider using a different weapon, but then that requires me putting like eight Foreman into yet more weapons. You know, the Foreman has not been a cheap one to mod up. Okay, say, or rather Cronin. I use a mix. I use a mix. Glaive or Cronin, you know. They're both pretty damn nice. You were saying chat has a restriction of 500 characters? Ah, that's why you got that limit there. So you, you could put in more emotes on Evo. It's just my emotes have a really long name, is what you're saying. Mogul Spanner emotes? Could do, absolutely. We could have a tea sip emote, you know? I don't do that about 50 bajillion times to stream, so why not? Also, make sure you remind me as soon as this trailer actually hits, I'm gonna have to turn off the music because otherwise that's gonna mess with everything. I definitely need to make sure I get rid of that music in the background when it comes to the trailer time. 18 sip. <laughs> it could be a thing, Sharono. It could absolutely be a thing, yeah. Like I say, guys, all of your suggestions, absolutely slam them into that uh, suggestions channel because I'll be honest, with my brain working the way it doesn't, <laughs> every single suggestion you guys are making is absolutely going to evaporate the moment I start doing arbitrations. I don't know why, it's just pretty sure I'd forget my own name if it wasn't on the screen half the time. So, uh, if you do have any suggestions, put them into the suggestions channel. And if you like the suggestions you see other people putting into that suggestions channel, put a positive reaction on it. Give it a tick. Give it a praise, Clem. Let me know that's what you want to see. And all right, then. Take that on board. Oh, surely you have frosted. Surely. I mean, how could it be in your frequently used if you've never, ever, ever used that mode? Oh right, yeah, let's bring the uh, music down now. Let's bring that down. I'm just gonna straight up pause that music now. We are seconds away from this going live. As soon as it goes live, I'm gonna full screen it. For some reason, I cannot full screen this window until the video goes live. I don't know why that's a thing. I really don't know why that's a thing. So as soon as it starts, which is just moments away, I will full screen it. Oh, frosted. I hate that I get that joke. <laughs> we are seconds away from this starting. Any moment now, it's going to launch. I'll try to full screen it straight away. Lavos arm snake, but it's a pog. Could do, could do. I actually really like that idea, Sharono. Definitely put that one in the suggestions channel. I do not want to forget that one. 
Look, even play Warframe Save Clem. I saw it, witnessed. <laughs> <gasps> Double Clem. Praise be unto Clem. He brings us gifts of gold. I don't know about you guys. Here it comes. That was a long 60 seconds. Oh, there you go, Zomtronic. You're well on your way to getting everything. How's the volume for you all guys? Is it too loud? Too quiet? Just right? Oh, and we got some ribbon raffle tickets coming in as we load into this, so let me type those in now. You won't be able to see the ticker until we return back to normal Warframe, but I'll type them in. A little bit loud? Alright, let's turn that down then. It did sound a bit loud in my head. There we go, how's that sounding? That should be a lot better. Premier always too loud? Alright. Uh, Frosted, the point of bits is to make sure you give Twitch money as well as just me. So, no, yeah, you can absolutely just tip the stream. Yeah, Frosted, bits do give uh, money to the streamer, so for every bit you throw at a channel, the content creator gets one US cent. But it also costs more than one US cent to buy the bits, so, you know. And you get the emotes, that's right, Martian. Oh, yeah. oh, we're upside down. In my youth, I often imagined I had another sibling. A spectre of sorts. Random having a spectre. A oh, right, that's a cool design. By the power vested in me by There's your Excalibur. Head of the corpus, I claim this sector. Everyone's latest waifu arrives. Shiny skins. Get wrecked hydroid, basically. I have waited. Just as Parvos waited. Now <laughs> I strike. July 6th. Ooh, that is a lot sooner than some people were expecting. July 6th. That is just next week, isn't it? There we go. That's the trailer. That's literally next week. Well then, boys and girls, that is the trailer, that is the release, that is the details. That is what is up and coming. So that is coming out next week. Woo, that is close. That is very, very close. So yeah, if you do have an active lich, get rid of them. <laughs> Absolutely get rid of them now. But there, there are some great looking weapons in there. I do like the designs. Look at those sisters. Really does look like it could be a very interesting approach. And they did also mention, I saw very quickly in the text that it said something about faster weapons. 
So it seems like we might have a faster turnaround on getting to and dealing with these new uh, Sisters of Parvos, as it were. So that could be good compared to uh, the whole Kuva Lich grind is not exactly a quick one at times. Also, yeah, there's going to be some uh, Syndicate details coming up. Syndicate moats and armor that I'm definitely looking forward to because I've been spending all of this standing at the moment. So far, I'm just getting mods and mods and mods and mods and mods and selling those off. It'd be nice to have something a little bit extra down the bottom here. But yeah, so that is going to be a whole bunch of new and interesting stuff coming out in just a week's time. That is very very close this time next week this stream next week will be on the latest update getting a feel for all of the new stuff that's going to be great that is definitely going to be great as i say small question just trying to get a rough feel for it how much plat would a triple positive skier uh skier jata uh, is that the skier jata you mean skier jati riven be worth roughly and honestly it depends on what you're talking triple positive like you can have three positives on there which are Plus cold, plus damage to Grenier, plus, I don't know, plus something stupid. <laughs> plus one of the many stupid things, plus impact, I guess. But yeah, that Umbra Sword, it all depends on what those positives actually are. A three positive, no negative isn't going to be the most valuable right off the bat, because you got no negative and you're splitting your positives across three different stats. That's not normally a good thing, but it does depend on those stats. If you've got crit chance, crit damage, and say range, then it's amazing. Uh, plus toxin, plus stage duration, plus crit chance. Aye, that's not great. Sorry, Islis, that's not a very valuable one, though. Uh, the Riven itself for the Skiajati will have itself more value than your typical melee, I think, because it is a common melee to own, so a lot of people will want a Riven for it. Plus toxin, not too great of a thing to get on a Riven, not for a melee, because there's so much more you could get there. So it's not a bad bad thing but it's not really a good thing stasis duration is honestly just terrible honestly just terrible and then the crit chance crit chance is nice but at the same time the crit chance you can get from a riven pales compared to other options so it's not that nice all told so yeah i wouldn't say it's that valuable of a riven also hello beard i have seen you around absolutely you popped in just at the uh the turn of the video there but hello indeed hope things are all going well for you i think i caught a glimpse you said uh things are going slowly with the house at least getting there all right let's get the music back because i've realized that my ears are completely empty at the moment there we go so we've already done today's sortie we've absolutely smashed through that guys and so hyped up for the update coming out next week which is supposed to have faster liches. I will do the investigation for you. Don't you worry, guys. I will give you the true answer on that. What we need to be jumping onto now is doing some of these arbitrations. We are on a time limit, as it were, because with things up and coming, we need to have this Vitus Essence. We need to have it by next week to get those mods on release day. They're 20 apiece. There's nine mods. So that's 180 Vitus Essence in total we need. Each of us needs that to get all of them. I have 125. Okay, I'm actually a lot closer than I feared. So I need 55 more Vitus Essence. Kind of saying, do they usually vault and unvault stuff in these kinds of updates? Uh, sometimes yes, sometimes no is my understanding. I don't think this one's going to be a vaulting. Let's see, how long was the last one? Uh, vault, 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 vault. Yeah, 64 days ago we got Zephyr and Chrome. I think they're on a three month site rather than two months. I could be wrong. I could indeed be wrong. Uh, there might be a vaulting happening. I just would have expected to have heard news about it if that was the case. But am I all saying, is it worth farming now or is it better to wait for the update? So they're updating the drop chance from the drones themselves. They're doubling the rate of those drops, which is a significant portion of the overall Vitus Essence you get, but it is not the only source. So with that, there is still the round award, which is one per round, or one per rotation drop, and you've got the chance of getting three in the actual rotation drops themselves. Those won't be changing. Yeah, Evo, go from 3% to 6%, yeah. 
So really it comes down to what's more important to you, getting the mods as soon as possible or spending as little time in arbitrations as possible. If you don't want to spend as much time in arbitrations, wait till after the update, go to arbitrations then, and then you'll get your Vita Essence that little bit quicker. Not a lot, but a little bit. If, however, you just want to get those mods as soon as possible, join us right now. We're going to be going into the arbitration. Uh, let's see what we actually have got. We've got a survival one, which is honestly ideal. Survival is a very nice one to have, so I'm quite happy to be jumping in on that one. So, let's grab Ember, I think, because it said I had strength. Do I want Ember, actually? I don't think I want that strength buff for Ember, because Ember... She's good. Don't get me wrong, she's good. But I don't really like using her for survival. So, I'm just going to stick with Old Faithful, you know? The frame that doesn't die does me pretty well most days. So, Shuro is saying, can I get in there for Arby's? You absolutely can. If you want to join me on arbitrations, uh, you'll need to send me a message in game because I can't remember everyone's usernames. So, send me a message. You can just do it nice and simple. W slash W the Kengineer. And then put your message, say hello, say you want in. Let me know you want to be here. I will invite you into the squad and we'll get smashing onto this. It is a survival against the Grenier. So make sure you are typed for that. Make sure you're not bringing like magnetic or something stupid. There we go. One person in. Two people in. That sounds like three people. Yep, there we go. That's a full squad. Bish, bash, bosh. We are all in. So as we're up against decent level grenier i'm going to bring out the steel path grenier build i have the foreman for the observe i currently have this type to radiation corrosive and you know what i don't need that i'm going to switch to viral uh so i just need to do that there we go and we'll stick with the astarte that nice heavy build also we got a load of riven raffle tickets coming in at the moment let me bring myself up to date on these so we've got this is grabbing two, Zomtronic grabbing one, Lin grabbing one more. So there we go, let's update that. There we go. So that should have everyone up. Oh, this grabbed one more whilst I was looking. Damn it, <laughs> I caught it. I caught it in the end, there we go. So that should have the ticket all up to date. Let's complete all of those. All right, then. He was saying can get out if someone else wants, though. I mean, Evo, you're in the squad now. If someone else wants in, they can join us on the next one. We are going to go hit this. I've got my gear together. Uh, the only thing I have got wrong is I've got the wrong Sentinel. Because as nice as Helios Prime is, I kind of prefer having Carrier. There we go. All right, enough faffing about. Let's jump into this arbitration. Arbitration level 60 to 80 is where it starts, which as you see is around about the second mission of a saucy in terms of level. So this is definitely kind of a step up from the star shot. There are extra modifiers, extra difficulties that do make it harder for newer players. If you can comfortably handle a sortie, you can comfortably handle an arbitration, pretty much. For those of you who are unfamiliar, there are a couple changes. First of all, we have arbitration shield drones. They turn nearby enemies immortal, and those drones themselves are also immune to any uh, Warframe ability. You have to take them out with guns, or, you know, other standard weaponry. Once they're taken out, they explode violently in our favour. And then you can just kill the rest of the uh, surviving enemies normally. The other big thing is that if you die, you do not have the chance to be normally revived. Instead, your teammates need to work together to revive you with effectively the same as uh, index points. And uh, if everyone dies, there's no revives, you just, you just die. You lose, game over, you're messed up.
So yeah, slightly harder mission, slightly tougher rules. Nothing that we can't handle, but something to handle. I didn't type that there, I didn't really need to type it, it's just fling it out to kind of get all of the enemy's attention. How do I miss that shot? I have messed with the audio levels, what with the whole uh, YouTube thing there, so let me know if anything is too loud or too quiet. Terrifying saying you want to camp somewhere? Nah! I know we're going for a long haul, but we don't need to start setting up a camp this early. We can just kind of wail on everything. We're all pros here, right? We've got MR26, 27, 29 and 30. I mean, we can handle. We can just handle. Okay, that was a nice, lovely explosion for whoever that one was. I mean, we're at the level where, even though I've got this equipped to deal slash procs to do the damage, I'm still just killing most of the enemies with the base damage of the weapon itself. Part of that is the fact that the formula is very strong, but part of that is the fact that these enemies are low level. You see, we're absolutely fine. I do also have the ability to just kind of carve through things. You see, they, they don't exactly survive. You know? Doesn't take much effort for their stock ram to just kind of cut through them. And this is with absolutely no combo generated. I just kind of cut. And you do have to actually hit. That, that would help, again. Yeah. One downside of this build I've got at the moment is I think it doesn't have any kind of range buffs. I do have that. Oh, hey! What do you know? Vice Assassin's just kill that guy. Yeah, that's the stuff there. That drop is going to be twice as common. The ones from the drones. That's the change over that they're making with the update next week. I love that I could say next week now. Bollocks. Also, it looks like there's one over here too. I'll just go and grab that. Good thing the drones don't damage the players with the explosions. God, yeah. Could you imagine that? That would be really unfair. That would be exceedingly unfair. So, oh yeah, here's this big AoE explosion of the thing that you have to kill by the way it kills you. I wouldn't put up with that. If that was how this game mode worked on top of everything else, I just would not play it. At least not without a frame that can go invulnerable. I think there's only about four of them that can go properly invulnerable. Be more of a reason to use ranged weapons. But ah, even then, you'd still have to get the distance from them. Hey. You see how far that's reaching out? That's a pretty big range on that. It's nearly killing these guys. They have more health than us. Most frames wouldn't stand up to that. Now, I'm quite glad that uh, us shooting the drones doesn't cause the, the drones to kill us. That, that would be terrible. I do have a lower ranked Exodia Contagion on this, so I can Bling attacks as well, like that. Oh, someone found the target. Nice. Oh, it's this guy. And he's already scanned. I didn't need to even use that trap. Oh well. I'll take the standing anyway. Nice to have just that little bit more, you know? Now, with Yareli coming out... Uh, if they are locked behind a quest, I don't know if they are, but if they are a quest frame, that would mean we'd most likely get their blueprint from the quest. And as a result, you'll need to get a second blueprint from Samaris. 
because that's just how the game works. If you get something from a quest, you can get a duplicate only from Samaris. And for a Warframe, that usually costs 50,000 just for the main blueprint. 50,000 standing, that is. So do bear that in mind as well. You're pre-grinding. If you want to get her blueprint for uh, the purposes of, what's it called? Helmet, there's the word. Then you'll absolutely need to have enough Samaris standing to be able to do that. So yeah, pre-grind out some extra Samara standing. It's not the biggest deal, because, you know, you're still going to have to build the first one before you get the second one, but yeah. I did see the Vent Kids, yes. I had heard theories that uh, should be related to the Vent Kids. I don't know whether that's going to be in the Syndicate shop, or if it's going to be a mission involving the Vent Kids. Honestly, it could be either. It could be both. I can honestly I say as well, I have done basically nothing with the Venkid Syndicate before now. Uh, effectively nothing, so I know basically zero about them. So it's going to be a learning experience. Could be like Lavos. It could also be like Lavos. Lavos you just kind of pick up from, uh, from the Syndicate. There's not really anything Syndicate behind it, just get standing, get Lavos. Thank you, another Vitus Essence, don't mind if I do. The fun fact this kit gun is actually kind of capable. No surprises there. It's a kit gun. They're good. Yeah, K dives, they do just kind of exist. I never looked into them, never got interested in doing so. In fact, my plan pretty much was to just, you know, not do them and still get MR30 because all the other stuff will be enough. <laughs> That has been my plan up to this point, of just kind of ignoring the fact that they exist, because they, up to this point, haven't really kind of gelled with anything. Am I saying they're fun? I mean, fair enough. If you enjoy them, you enjoy them. I ain't going to take that from you. To say, did some stuff with the Vent Kids when I did not know about the Archwing Launcher. Assume the higher end players just use a high end K drive. <laughs> oh, that's actually amazing. <laughs> so, thinking, wow, this guy's got some serious airtime. <laughs> uh, but alas, no. no. I knew about the Archwings before K drives were a thing. A friend of mine tried to get me into the game before Fortuna existed. I just didn't quite get it. Because my first experience was basically the Plains of Eidolon and going, what is even happening? And then nighttime happened and I doubled down on them, what is even happening? Yeah, it wasn't exactly a great place for a new player like MR1 to be. I had no idea what anything was and it was like, hey, here's an open world. Here's an enemy you can't even hurt. Go figure it out. Like, okay, yeah, no, I'm just, I'm just going to leave. That was my first experience. I'm trying to say standing's not too bad if you do the races. I mean, yeah, if I do the stuff that's for the Syndicate, I imagine the Syndicate stuff would be okay. It's just I don't want to. I have no direct or indirect interest in it. No, nothing is telling me go deal with it. This update may change that. But up to this point, it's been, hey, look, you can get a skateboard. I have a magical space ninja. Why would I need a skateboard? And they can call it a half a board, but it's basically a skateboard. Oh, yeah. Oh, there is a drone. Let's find the drone. Kill the drone. And now just do that for of it. Didn't even charge it up. Don't need to. There's more just to assert dominance. Now, if anyone is thinking about doing arbitration solo, be warned, yes, you can do it solo. However, if you enter bleed out any way whatsoever, you just instantly lose the mission. There is no self-revive. If you've not got a teammate to get your ass back up, you just instantly lose the mission. 
You keep all of your rotation rewards, but everything you picked up, which will include a lot of your Vitus Essence, is just gone. Like right now, let's see, how much am I on? I am on three Vitus Essence. I could have sworn it was more than that, but apparently it's only three. And then we've got the rotation rewards of two. If I were to lose right now, that three I picked up, just gone. Not even with a Resing Jin? No. If you enter Bleed Out, you lose. So that means Inaros' passive doesn't work here. Sevagoth's passive doesn't work here. Both of those enter Bleed Out, both of those just lose. Wukong's passive does work because that doesn't let him enter Bleed Out. He just doesn't die in the first place. But if something stops you from dying, yeah, it works. If something allows you to get out of Bleed Out a different way, no. Just doesn't work in arbitration. The same is also true for pets. So pets which would normally go down and need to be revived just instantly die instead. That's it. Your pet's gone. You lose. Does Nidus revive work? Nidus does work because Nidus doesn't revive. Nidus prevents himself from dying. That's the big, 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 big difference. If it stops you dying in the first place, it works. If it instead allows you to do something about being dead, it doesn't happen. Stop pointing your shield at me. There we go. If you have an enemy that just keeps putting their shield in your way and you're trying to melee them, just, just do a slam attack, it's fine. And am I saying I think Vulpophila does revive? Uh, I've not actually used the Augment yet, or mod for the Vulpophilas, which you know, is supposed to save you from death. It again depends, does it save you from death, or does it bring you back from death? Because if it's latter, then no, it won't work. The bleed out state just doesn't happen. Yo, Omega, how am I doing? I'm doing pretty well, thank you. Hope you're doing well yourself. Did you catch the trailer, Omega? This is a part of a trailer. Because that is going to be coming out in less than a week. It's coming out on, was it the 6th? Yeah, the 6th, they said. The so Tuesday next week. You did? Excellent. Drone is saying, Vulpa Violets die and then come back at the regular respawn time. They just don't have the larval state. Okay. I didn't know that Vulpa Violets could actually revive here as well. Oh, fair enough. Another if they have that, that's awesome. Customer. Oh, the MR31 grind can start off. I'm not even at 30 yet, so 31 can just go. No, 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 no. And yo, how come? For? Thank you very much for the follow. Glad you're enjoying the channel. Welcome. Clap, clap. Okay, I took 15 seconds off the cooldown with that. You lose the benefit of the Vulpa file until it respawns the Shrono. Fair enough, fair enough. I mean, it kind of makes sense, really, you know. It's, it's dead. It doesn't make sense that it can come back to life, but it makes sense that it's dead. Hey, I could actually hit that one up there. I was wondering. Tano is saying, is it wasteful to buy Orokin Reactors and Catalyst with Plant? No, it's not wasteful. Uh, it's actually quite difficult to obtain more than a few of them by free-to-play. So, absolutely, yeah, get them with Platinum. They are one of the better things to get with Platinum for the amount that you get for that Platinum. Do it, just do it. And if you don't have enough Platinum for the thing you really want to put a Reactual Catalyst into, go and get some Platinum, it doesn't take that long to get 20. In fact, I go so far as to say that, at least if you're on PC, do not use Nightwave creds to purchase reactors and catalysts. Use those creds to purchase uh, auras, sell the auras for platinum, and use that platinum to get the reactors and catalysts, because it is more efficient by far. I think it's 20 credits to get an aura, 75 to get yourself a reactor or catalyst. I'm typically selling those auras uh, anywhere between 20 to 35 platinum. So one aura is at least enough to get me a catalyst or reactor. 
but one third of the credit cost. It just makes sense. I don't know what it's like on consoles. It could well be very different on consoles. I don't know what the market is like for Switch, for example. Probably not great, to be honest. But yeah, on PC, absolutely get yourself some auras. Even if you sell the ones which are available that week, which isn't the best idea because you're not getting the best price for them. But if you do, you're still getting a price that's more worthwhile. How long are we staying in the survival? Um, I'm not really sure, to be honest. I mean, we're kind of handling at the moment, and the more we can handle, the better. The survival is a very nice one to have. It just kind of keeps going. There's no objective we can just lose, which is very, very good news. Uh, does anyone know what the next arbitration is? It might not be unlocked yet, because I think we came in here at 18 minutes. But usually with arbitrations, I like to keep going until two people have gone down, and then we start to get a feel for how things are. If they've gone down stupidly, then we'll keep going. If two people are doing their absolute best and still gone down, then we start to get a feel maybe it's time to do it. Thank you, Evie. The other distinction is if we start to struggle to actually, you know, complete objectives. We reach a point where even objectives are just beyond us, then we just kind of go, okay, yeah, now we're done. Like, if we are living just off the life support capsules, then we're like, okay, yeah, no, we're not going fast enough. We need to do it. But we're not there yet. Not even close. Now, let me just check. Have I got Naramon on or have I got Zenery? Neither, I've got Vazarin. Okay. He was saying it switched over to defense. Okay, yeah, we're staying in this one as long as we can because sod defense. Arbitration defense uses similar rules to sortie defense in that you have an operative to protect. However, if the operative goes down, you lose the mission. Game over. That is one of, if not the worst one. Sure, you can use certain tactics like uh, Limbo Banish to try and keep them in the rift. That does require someone to constantly be banishing them. But that's about all you've got. You were saying defense best is to kill the whole map, not defend the actual objective. Yeah, it's just if one thing gets through your defense, one moment of weakness, there goes your operative and there goes the mission. One person covering one flank goes down at the wrong time and that's it. One radiation proc. Oh, I don't think you get too many of those normal missions for exactly that kind of reason. Alright. And this is a Leech Xmas Nox. This is going to resist the hell out of this strike. Let's see. He's tanking it pretty well. He's tanking it pretty well. I built up no combo. Three hits. Yeah. So that, that's one of the few enemies I have to build up combo against. Whereas this heavy gunner, I hit them once and they're dead. Yeah. I haven't got knockdown protection on this, so that's not the greatest. But yeah, I, I can just kind of hit most enemies once and yep, he's dead. Damn it, stop knocking me over. I'm trying to do that. Okay, cool. I just wanted to test the arbitration drone can in fact be hurt by Exodia Contagion. That's good to know. I was saying it's crazy how much value all the vaulted relics have gained after you farmed some years ago. Yeah, there's a lot of really crazy high ones. Uh, what kinds of vaulted relics have you got there, Tarno? Are we talking Rhino? Are we talking Loki? How old are we going there? I mean, if you got Loki relics, you're laughing. Get Carver saying, do you think it's possible to have an initial combo of 220? No. No, it's not possible. You can get initial combo from Corrupt Charge. Uh, I think you can get initial combo from a Dagger mod, which is Covert Lethality. And you can get... Oh, that's a Sonic gun. I'll use the other gun then. Fine. Yeah. And then you can get uh, initial combo from Ribbons. I think the Ribbons, you're looking at a maximum of around about 40, I think it is. 
Dragon Prime comes with 30 initial combo. That's true. Yep, so we have got that. Oh, someone's pet's dead. Let's hope it's one that comes back. So yeah, if you add those all together, you've got 30 from Corrupt Charge, you've got 30 from Fraggle Prime, which is better than Covert Lethality can do. Uh, you can probably get about 40 from the best of the best of a ribbon. And I don't think you can even get that on Fraggle Prime, but let's say you can. That'll give you 100. 100 is pretty damn nice. You know, that's going to be a 5 times multiplier if you can actually get it that high. More likely you're going to be getting 4 times or even 3 times. Now, you should be able to get four times on the uh, Fraggle Prime. But that's the highest multiplier you can get. The full 220 for a 12 times multiplier? No. Definitely not possible. Wow, this is an intense melee fight. And you had to ruin it, Drone. Thanks. There we go. It's time to say no Loki, sadly. Don't know which ones are the older ones, but top sellers far have been Saren Primes. Ooh, Saren's not that old, but she is a very, very valuable frame. That'll be why. She is a good friend. Yeah, Nick, you're right. It's still good to have an initial combo of uh, 100. With a 5 times multiplier, if you can't actually get all the way up to that threshold, the New Blood Rush will give you 200% crit chance bonus there. Full Gladiator set, that'll give you another 300. So you get 500% uh, crit chance bonus from your combo. On top of the 550 you can get from the Sacrificial set, that's a 1050 crit chance bonus. And then you'll have a 5 times multiplier to your heavy attack damage as well. That, that's a pretty hefty combo of stuff. That, that's some really good stuff to have. I'm not even trying to build combo because I'm not on uh, Narrowmon, so I, I just... I'm involved with the combo. I know I'm on the wrong build to not be using combo, but well, I just didn't bring the right build, really. Yeah, if you've got uh, pieces lying around, certainly if you feel like there may be a vault change coming soon, I'm not sure if there is, but if you feel like there is a vault change coming soon, the more expensive pieces, it's often a good idea not to hold on to them if you don't like holding on to their investments that long. If you're okay with the gamble, fine, go with it. Hope they don't get unvaulted. But if they do get unvaulted, your investment or your value of what you have will go down significantly. Just bear that in mind. However, I am not a financial advisor, even if it is fake money in Warframe. But, you know, take it with a pinch of salt. You know your own circumstances, that thing, that, you know, that effect. I hit you, you die. Thank you. <laughs> how rude of them. They just won't die when I strike them first time. See? That's how you should go. First Yorican cells already. Oh, Evo must have himself a uh, set of boosters. I don't think I'm on 30. How many am I on? I must be on about 15. 12. God, I'm 15. I'm going to guess booster and possibly a smoother as well then. Either a smoother or an MR30 relay boost. Actually, wait, no. Relay boost would affect us all. Never mind, not that one. saying just boosted and cap. Yep, there we are. Boosted and cap. Okay, see, I don't have to rely on things like uh, Kavats for extra stuff. I just use good old Carrier Prime. Keeps me alive and keeps things interesting. I mean, Gary Prime's source of health, source of shield, source of ammo, and a source of loot. I mean, what more could you ask for than a uh, companion that gives you every single thing you need to pick up? And it gives me all of it. 
There goes the Hawker Filer again. Dobtronic saying Dex Pixia should be pretty standard uh, mind wise. Nothing too weird on them. Uh, you mean build wise? Yes. There's nothing too weird really to think about with Dex Pixia. They just kind of work. Uh, your typical uh, typical secondary setup will do you the trick. This is where some Titania main chimes in and says, well, actually. You get 0.5% more power by using this combination that I've never heard of. But yeah, I'm pretty sure it's normal. Back. And he's dead. Oh, took the head off him. That's ugly. The grenade, not the whole decapitation bit. They're just ugly anyway. Well, don't need to bury that body. You have to give the uh, Grenier War Machine some credit, though. Managing to create all of these clones. I mean, that that's a lot of biomass they're going through. That We're just constantly kind of... Oh, shit. I'm alive! That we're just constantly carving through. Even if we take the head off of them, they are still ugly as sin. Yeah, I got a few uh, primes before I got the standard primes as well, Sontronic. Titania wasn't one of them, but that's simply because Titania Prime didn't exist when I got Titania. So, uh, kind of cheating slightly there. Right, for all the non-prime frames now, that again is the case. I have them before their primes. Taken a little bit more damage there than I intended, so I just quickly just use a heal. And we're all good again. That slash prop might actually be enough to kill him. Let's have a look. It was. Excellent. Uh, that is a bit of a mix-up, isn't it, uh, Isilis? You're not Titania? No, I'm better. I imagine if someone just bought Titania outright and then did that quest, it would be even weirder. Unless they have a hidden voice line for that. I wonder if anyone's tried that. Grab Titania, do the Titania quest, and see if she goes, You're not Titania. Or if she goes, You're a fake Titania. You're not the real one, you're a copy. Oh, there's some stuff to pick up over here. Let's go fish that out. I want the loot, give me the loot. Thank you, I have the loot. There's also an undying will. I don't really need it, I'm gonna grab it anyway because someone took the time to the market. Ta da! Mop is saying Vorban Prime was my first Prime. There, dude. I'm pretty sure my first Prime was uh, Trinity. Thanks to Twitch. Followed by Equinox. Thanks to, you know, just doing it normally. Mac. Load of good that shield, did you, mate? not push me around like that. Bid saying still need to do it. Sorry. What do you still need to do, Bid? Don't tell me you still need to do Chain of Harrow. Please don't tell me you need to do Chain of Harrow. That doesn't make sense. Surely not. Also, I appear to be rolling endlessly. I'm not sure what my keyboard's just done there. That was weird. Oh, Silver Grove. That makes a lot more sense, Bid. Yeah. I put off the Silver Grove for quite some time. And it's kind of funny, I finally get around to doing that quest and then Titania Prime comes out like a month later. 
sure. Dom Strike saying growing power seems really good. Uh, yeah, it is really good. It's a free 25% strength boost, which is basically always available because status effects are stupidly easy to do. It's just, you only really need it if you need the 25% strength. Because whilst I say it's free, it's not free of opportunity. Every time you use growing power, you're not using another mod you could be using. For example, you could be using Corrosive Projection. Or you could be using... What am I using? Oh, I'm using Corrosive Projection. Yeah, there we go. That's a pretty big deal, that is. That's a pretty big deal. Yeah, if I say, oh, I already missed new core. What do you mean you missed new new core? Did you just forget to bring one? No, you got one. What could you possibly miss about the new core? Because the nerf is not going to kill it. Absolutely not going to kill it. Also, hello, Papster. How are you doing today? Hopefully, you caught the trailer as well. If not, it's up on YouTube. So this is a part of us trailer. And it's uh, the update's coming out next week. But yeah, doing pretty well. We're getting ourselves some Vite Assessments in advance. Yeah, sure. Uh, cha chaining from four enemies down to two. Yeah, it is going to take a little bit longer to apply to new enemies. And by a little bit longer, I mean you're actually going to see the enemies die rather than just a wash of numbers. But you're still going to completely wipe the room with it. Right, for example, I have the Gaze Kit Gun equipped right now. It is a weaker version of the Kuva Nuko in that it only has two chains, and the damage from those chains is pathetic. It's 20% on the second target, 4% on the third target. Meanwhile, Kuva Nuko is like, lol, let me just do full damage. So, uh, yeah. This gun is handling pretty nicely with much worse stats. The two chains the Kuvanuka is going to, and much, much, much worse chaining damage. And it will still get shit done. The Kuvanuka is not going to suffer. Just like melee's not going to suffer. The absolute worst case scenario of the nerf for melee is something like a 55% damage loss. 55%. Sorry, 45%. You're going down to 50%. You've lost 45%. And that's only in the worst case scenario where you are relying heavily on the stuff that's getting nerfed. Or realistically, nah. Everyone's fine. Nuke is going to slam with the status mod? Absolutely. That is a big part of the change in favour of Nuke Core. Also with the new core, you can now use the Exodus slot for beam range. So you can shoot the new core with full effect even further away. Because beam range mods now move over to the Exodus. Whereas currently, uh, whilst you can get projectile speed on Exodus, you can't get beam range on Exodus. That change is pretty damn nice. As someone who is a fan of lasers myself, I do appreciate the extra range option. Leaves through all of them. Look at that. One hit at a time and then they die. I'm still amazed at just quite how much. I mean, I hit them all with the same hit and they all three die. Okay, I just had to time that one, right? Oh. There we go. Got him in the back. I feel like I've gone away from everyone. Let me get back to everyone. Yes, Beard, the new core nerf is part of the primary melee balance. Uh, 
because they basically went, oh yeah, out of all the secondaries, this one is seeing quite a lot of use, and maybe that's because we made it ridiculously powerful. It's got very high damage stats to start with, excellent chaining, very high status stats, bonus damage for it being a Kuva weapon, and then they're like, you know what we should do? Let's give it a five times critical multiplier, but a low critical chance. There's no way that could go wrong. Kuva Nuke became the meta. As we all know. Damn it. There's a drone. Where's the drone? There's the drone. Got the drone. Let's resume our regular killing. Actually, we need to use one of these. We're getting a bit tight here. And you see, the tank on levels hasn't even begun to break a sweat here. We are over half an hour into this arbitration of all things. I'm not even trying to stay alive. I just kind of stand in the thick of it. They're all shooting me. I just kind of... Yeah. Excuse me, coming through. Kind of thing. DE. Yeah. That's the thing, uh, Beard. The nerf to the Kuvanukor is about as strong as the nerf to melee. So, the weapon that can compare with melee got a melee scale nerf. Great. And then it got a buff in the process. So, actually really not that big of a problem. If you think about it, it got more buffs than most weapons. Because not only did it get the three galvanized mods for pistols, like every other pistol did, but as I say, you can put the range mod onto the extra slot. That's a fourth buff. Damn it, Cora, I was trying to kill that one. Let's mix it up a bit. Wait, why am I on my Fluctus? Why am I on my Fluctus? Where's my Morzalon? Oh, for God's sake. Yo, PJ559, thank you for following. Why am I on a bright yellow Fluctus? I cannot see a thing. This this is not the correct weapon. I should be using a Morzalon. I hope you guys didn't want to actually see anything while I was on this stream. You know, it's effectively a podcast with my face over the top. Let me see if I can get the optimal fire rate. There we go. I mean, that punch through is pretty damn spicy. You know? <laughs> How can you complain about being able to need to see when there's nothing left to see? Imagine if I have to put some actual mods onto this. Okay, the Arsene Xmas is taking a bit. Final eight shots. Where's Evo? <laughs> Drones can't hide behind enemies. Got infinite punch through? Yeah. They can't hide behind walls. This isn't like Foreman punch through. This just goes through everything. It'll go through walls. It'll go through drones. It'll go through your retinas. Everything. All right, there we go. That's enough of that. As in, I've literally run out of ammo, so I'm forced to say that's enough of that. But that's enough of that. So I'm trying to say, according to the wiki, rocking it once is enough to keep 25% on longer abilities. Rocking what now? What we're rocking is on track. Also, how much do you think we can tell a max rank cross projection? Lowest C is 30 flat. Yeah, so you don't need to uh, rank up a corrosive projection to sell it. You won't get any extra value for a max rank corrosive projection. 
because corrosive projection costs around about nothing to rank up. I don't think I have ever worried about the endo or credit cost of a uh, aura ever. Like ever. It's three ranks. Yeah? If you can't afford that, you're not buying corrosive projection. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, we've growing power. Once you've cast an ability, it keeps that strength until the ability runs Another out. Even if your customer. strength bonus drops. That's the same way of every single ability and every single strength source. The strength and all other stats are calculated on cast. So, say with a wisp moat, if you proc growing power and then put down your moat, it'll have that strength forever. At least until the moat vanishes one way or another. And yo, Mutts Nuts, thank you very much for following. Welcome to the channel. Cast my three for more ammo. Uh, you see, Papster, uh, everyone and their dog was kind of complaining about the uh, brightness of the Fluctus, including myself. So maybe not do more of it. That, that would be bad for everyone involved. That would be very, very bad for everyone involved. Otherwise, I would have, yeah, absolutely. Okay, I appear to be followed by a Glaive user. Let me go somewhere where everything's not yet dead. There we go. Bloody drones. Bloody drones. I got him. Oh, don't worry about it, Shrono. If you just end up meleeing some enemies with your Glaive, that's not a problem. Kill the drone. Drone is dead. Execute that guy. You're very welcome, Mudstuns. Very, very welcome indeed. I'm glad you're enjoying them. If you do have any other areas you would like to see covered, and I'm saying this to everyone as well, not just my nuts. If you do have any other areas you would like to see covered, suggest them over on the Discord in the Suggestions channel. Another the video coming out on cut. Saturday is from one of those suggestions. And yo, Friendly Catholic, thank you very much for following. Glad you're enjoying the channel. Welcome. Yes, indeed, Omega. Today is for a rifle ribbon. If you want to get in on the ribbon raffle, submit your ticket, get a chance to win it. That almost rhymes, and it annoys me that it doesn't, actually. <laughs> Hello, Friendly. I'm glad you do enjoy the videos. That is always the intention. Is this the bit where you enjoy the stream loads as well? I'm hoping so. We're currently just pre-farming for the galvanized mods because they're coming out next week. And I want to have that Vitus Essence. I don't actually know how much we've gained so far. Let's check. Uh, nine from drops. And uh, we've been here 41 minutes, so that'll be another eight. So we're on 17 so far. I'm on 17. I need 55. So quite a bit to go. Who doesn't love the streams to snake? Um, I mean, that's a very good question. Let me see. Is, there's probably some people out there who think this game is too violent. Uh, there's probably Destiny hardcore fans who are like, Ew, Wolfwing. But that's that's a better game. Why would I watch that? You know, that, there's probably like five people that dumb. But for everyone else, I mean, come on, I'll say not like. You've basically got the human Wikipedia slashing enemies with a heavy attack build, which, if I actually tried, could kill level cap enemies, you know. What more do you want? Oh, Zomtronic's got Mesa Prime. There we go. Zion's Ace, I think, is very upset with me, but I am very happy for you that you have that wonderful, wonderful frame. That's not an enemy. That is a life support. I can't kill that. Fun facts we can, you cannot kill life support. I know it may look like something you could hit, but it is in fact not something you can hit. You can run into it, you can stand on it, but you can't kill it. 
True, yeah, you're very right. Enemies don't actually die here, because, like, how would we keep seeing the same enemies over and over? They don't actually die. What we're doing is we're sending them back to the lobby. Right? You know, they, they just have to then go and spawn a new life, and then they go back to the spawn point, and they go through the whole process again. We're not killing them. It's like Battle Royale, in that I'm having a royal time battling them. They go with Samaris? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, some of them do go with Samaris. They, they go to the farm up north. We can go visit them any time, but they don't seem to remember us. At least that's what Samaris says. They run out of self recipes and have to restart the mission. Maybe that's it, yeah. All of the enemies we encounter, they're actually on a permanent arbitration. They don't get revives. So they just go down. Kill life sport by pressing X at it? I mean, let's give it a try. Let's see. Nope, it's still here. You lied to me, Mutts Nuts. It's still here. This is not a dead life support. It is still standing. They're playing an intense Conclave. Man, if Conclave was actually this kind of intense, I might actually play it. But uh, I, I don't see any like 100 versus 100 battles going on in Conclave. Oh, is that live sport bleeding stage? Oh, yeah, no, it has gone, actually, yeah. All right, I killed the live support. Epic. Up next, watch as I kill the moon. How do we use live support? We use the interact button, which I believe is a default of X. That's why it's also X on Xbox, because Xbox had to copy PC. Uh, so they went and used four of the letters off the keyboard because they didn't know how to make different buttons. Like, they saw the PlayStation controller, which already existed, of course, with PlayStation 1, and they're like, you know what? We could probably do that as well. It's just we don't know what buttons to use, and so they just took four keys off a keyboard and called it a day. And that is a true fact. I'll not have anyone tell me otherwise. Your mods up here. Don't mind if I do. Give that knock something to cry about. And then hit him as hard as I can. Wow, that was extra effective. Just carving through them all. Be using shield, mate. So I'm saying I should probably use my flat to get some core mods. Oh, no, 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 no. I mean, yes, absolutely you should. But no, if you can get Maycell, other frames that you want to enjoy. Who cares about core mods when you can just be enjoying yourself, you know? That said, yes, you should probably be getting at least the corrupted mods for your Warframe. And maybe things like Split Chamber, Hornet Strike, the 60-60 mods, that kind of thing, you know? The stuff that makes your weapons actually do what you need them to do. That's definitely a good way to spend your plat as well. Hey, hey, don't knock me away. I was trying to assassinate you. Thank you. God, you think they'd want to live or something? Like saying I enjoy dragons. I mean, fair enough. I'm also quite partial to some dungeons. Put the two together and it sounds like a good night. It's been so long since I played Dungeons & Dragons. I really need to find a group. or we'll start a new group of Dungeons & Dragons. It's just trying to find the time for it, you know? We're making videos, running streams, and uh, living life. It doesn't really leave a lot of time for running a campaign like it used to in uni. Heavy Calibre's not hard to get. I mean, it's just as hard to get as all the other Corrupted mods, so, you know. The thing it's not hard to get is 
like any particular piece of Semigoth's not hard to get because you know you got the others whilst you're trying to get it. Like, well, yeah, that, that, that's from the same drop table. I'm saying, speaking of dragon, does the damage buff affect slash procs? Okay, you have to be a little bit more specific there because I think you mean chroma, but I don't know if you mean chroma. Yeah, most of the corrupted mods I actually bought myself rather than go through the whole uh, process. Alright, so Chroma, I believe he gives a pure damage buff. And pure damage is part of modded damage, so modded damage is what affects your slash procs, so I would say yes. I think Chroma does affect your slash procs. I mean, I, I can't see him not, you know. Yo, Black Magic 14, thank you very much for the follow. Welcome to the channel. It's saying, maybe closer to winter, I'd love to join your D&D &D group. You want a first-timer? It's certainly an option, Beard. Again, it is not even half of a baked idea at this point in time. It's just a, a hankering, a, an impulse of, I would like to at some point again, maybe, eventually. Hell, maybe not even D&D. &D. I might do something completely different, like Dark Heresy. Yeah, fun fact, by the way, there's different tabletop games than just D&D. &D. Who knew? <laughs> that's what I thought Fenomero, yeah. That's what I thought about Chroma. That confirms it. Come on guys, get in range of the death sweep. I'm only trying to kill you all in a single swing. There we are, thank you for contributing to your own demise. I don't actually know what the exact drop rates are of corrupted mods, but uh, there's there's enough corrupted mods there. It's effectively uh, they all come from the same drop source. You'll just get them along the way. I want that. Thank you. Yeah, fair do, beard. Fair do. I don't even start. Oh, we lost terrifying. Oh, okay. Let's bring him back to life. One time he didn't pay attention. Yeah, gets you like that. We are up onto some pretty substantial levels at the moment now. I have noticed I am starting to take a few more hits than usual. Like quite a bit. My carrier prime effect just got killed. I heard it use its regen. Luckily, regen does work for uh, sentinels. But that's a thing. I'm going to need to switch over to the foreman. So yeah, chroma stacks onto serration. Absolutely right there, friend of cat lake. But when it says like 120... Well, 1200% if you get it like that high. That is in addition to, not multiplied with, in addition to Serration's 165. Oh, I just noticed we got Terrifying back already. That's fine. Cool. Speaking of D&D, &D, what are my thoughts about streaming it? I would need to have a very particular kind of group to stream it. Right now, me engaging with you guys here on stream, it's easy enough to do. Because, you know, it's my job. There's no two ways of putting it. I enjoy the hell out of this. I'm very, very thankful for the fact that I can do this. I'm thankful to myself for being able to do it, you know, what with having invested in this computer and the skill set behind it all, obviously. But when it comes to streaming, I want to make sure I'm giving you guys an entertaining interaction for all of my streams. With all the people we have, for example, in the Among Us group that we run every Friday, currently on the uh, Variety Friday streams. Everyone there is someone who not only I am familiar with or otherwise have had vouched for, but it's someone who knows that they are going onto a stream and it's meant to be somewhat entertaining to watch, not just play. So we expect shenanigans to go a little bit wilder. I would need to have that same assurance for a D&D group. And finding a group of players who can commit to that kind of thing isn't the easiest thing to do. 
You've got to have the right chemistry. D&D can get surprisingly emotionally intimate at times. I don't mean intimate in a romantic sense. I mean intimate in a platonic sense, but still intimate in itself. You have to be close with people to make it really make it interesting. So yeah, I'm not opposed to the idea. But I'd say don't hold your breath. I'm certainly not making any promises. Because as wild as it would be, it would take some setup that I've not even begun to do. That's all really on that. Oh, we're a bit low on the life support. Let's fix Another that before someone dies. Yo, cool story time. Thank you very much for the five. I'm glad you enjoyed my cool story. At least I imagine that's why you followed right this moment. So I'm trying to say I didn't realise how much the 100% crit damage was from Dashwire. So you saw the prime target crap is only 110%. Yeah. Here's the thing, Zomtronic. That 100% is actually based off strength. So it's not just 100%. If you have a 200% strength, you have a 200% critical damage bonus on all of your weapons. Not just a couple. All of them. Whilst you're on the dash wire, of course. So say, for example, you throw a glaive whilst you're on a dash wire. You've then got this massive critical damage boost, which is worth more than two critical damage mods you'll get on the glaive anyway. With that bit of strength bonus, that is. Oh yeah, Volt Shield can do great stuff as well for that, absolutely. It's one of the reasons I'm a bit annoyed that Quiver doesn't include the zip wire when it's uh, subsumed. You have access to the noise arrow, you have access to the poke bubble, you don't have access to sleep, and you don't have access to dash wire. It's like, come on. You've taken out half the reasons to use the empowered Quiver ornament. It's that time. How much longer have we got on that defense arbitration that's up at the moment? Because we're handling at the moment. But if we get a nice new arbitration we can sink our teeth into after this one, I'd like to switch over to that. Just to give us a change of scenery, if nothing else. Yeah, it should be about 20 minutes. That's right. If someone can have a check-in chat. Those of us obviously in the mission have uh, a little bit less access to check-in right now. What with the whole we're in a mission. Oh, my carrier prime just used up another life. You can hear it from that kind of hissy sound. That's the best way I can describe it. I'll say so on a bow focus build it's nuts. You can give it to allies. Yep. That's the thing, some things are really nutty in numbers. And it's not because this game is balanced, it's because this game doesn't care about balance half the time. Yeah, you know, they're doing their best with the- oh shit. Ooh. Okay, I took a few extra hits than I intended there. Got a bit low. As I say, yeah. They're trying to do some rebalancing with the Arsenal divide, but the end of the game- end of the day, not end of the game- end of the day, <laughs> this game is all about kind of just power scaling until there's nothing left to scale against, you know? So you can expect to come across some ridiculously powerful stuff, it's just the nature of it. And it's a great thing. Ah yeah, friendly Catholic, spending out your Vitus this close to the update, that's a rough one. That's a rough mistake to have made, I feel with you there. What's done is done. It's just saying game's not PvP, so it's balance not important. Yeah, basically. Obviously, there does need to be some level of balance to, you know, keep things interesting. But at the same time, that balance doesn't need to be a competitive balance. And it's not like the makers of the Bratton Boltor are going to be pissed at the Bratton Prime and Boltor Prime exist. The game just kind of rolls with it. 
We do want to keep some kind of balance between melee, ranged, and magic. Lest either the wizards, or the rangers, or the fighters get pissed off. As long as we at least have that balance. Oh. Okay, that guy's a shield of shadows. Didn't realize we had a necros. Have I not noticed this entire time? Yeah, we have a necros. Used to me. But yeah, so long as we have enough balance between ranged, melee, and magic in this game, we're fine. And if I insult your sensibilities by referring to guns, melees, and warframe abilities as ranged, melee, magic, you know. You're kind of uh, not paying attention to what this game's built on. Right now, I am the equivalent of a uh, one-third caster tank. Not a paladin, just a heavy hitter. Controller type. Very, very hard to take down. Um, the backup ranged weapon if I really want to use it. I'm definitely going to be making some changes to this build with the updates coming out. Gonna take a couple former to make it all work, and I'm looking forward to making it work. Brooks an open palm monk, yeah, something like that. Something like that indeed. I would like a nice proper paladin in this game. Yeah, we can have an exalted uh, sword and shield, have its own unique stance, give them the ability to create a project a protective zone. Exalted uh, Sword and Shield, they can smite with it, that kind of thing. This guy's shield is really in the way. I could have done that better. I know we've got Oberon, but he just does not fit the bill. I'm trying to say, I don't have any power mods yet besides Intensify. So we'll definitely pick up in Power Quiver. Yeah, fair enough. Oh, something's died. Because, like, for example, uh, you can get hold of Augur Secrets, that's a nice strength mod. You've got the Corrupted Ones, Blind Rage, Transient Fortitude, those are good for strength, obviously. Uh, let me think, there are other strength mods, I'm just completely drawing a blank. But you can also bring up strength from other areas as well. Like, for example, you can get it from certain Kitkan Arcanes. Oh, a specific one. Might be Pax in Power, I think it's called. So you can get it from the Aura. There's, of course, Power Drift. How could I forget that? Oh, we've lost Terrifying again. Let's fix that as quick as we can. Terrifying the Cora. Makes sense. Cora's not the tankiest. Gonna move? Yep. Welcome to Warframe. Do you over eventually. Let's get rid of all these uh, Arctic XMI. They're probably what did you in. Pax and Bolt, that's the one, not Pax and Power. <laughs> Let's just clear this area. I'm taking a few hits. Heal myself up. Okay. I am in a bit of a struggling spot there. Let's get some radiation out here. That should convince the guys to focus on something that's not me for a moment. Oh, do not knock me over. That scares me at this tier. Lavels is tanky, but he does have his limits. Oh, we got Terrifying back. Wow, someone was on ball on that. Alright. I was barely paying attention. Suddenly they're back. I'll take it, but now. Yeah. Give over on uh, Silver Nagus. Eh. I'd honestly just like to see a different frame. Like, Oberon has his place at the moment. I'd like to see a proper Paladin frame. Really dedicated to it. Oh yeah, there's going to be the new powers on mod as well. That'll be a strength buff available to everyone. Absolutely. Getting it is going to be interesting, but it's there. I wonder what the trigger condition is. Still don't know. <laughs> I haven't checked today. They might have updated it. I don't think they have. So, we still don't know. 
But so it's saying, I thought all devs who started in this game were Magic the Gathering players, hence the importance of mods. I have no idea. Genuinely no idea. I mean, what with the recent introduction of uh, Necromex and things along that ilk, there is definitely a Warhammer 40k vibe going on as well nowadays. That can't be ignored. The Druid Warframe? Oh no, there isn't one. The Druids have more natural abilities, as well as the ability to transform into an animal. We don't have anything that can transform into an animal, which could be an interesting introduction. You know, we've got the whole unique rigging of Sevagoth with the ghostly type. So I imagine we could have something along that line. That could get pretty nasty. Can you imagine you could have uh, someone who could turn into a dire Hayeka. Something along those lines. Titania is close to that. Eh, I mean, yes, is kind of. Well, actually, the more I think about it, yeah. She's got Beguiling Lantern. She's. Oh, shit. Focus it. Yeah, she's got Beguiling Lantern, things along that side. Yeah, she can enchant enemies. She doesn't seem to have some natural control. Thorns. She's got the transformation into a pixie. Yeah. She is kind of a fey druid. Now that you mention it. She's more just kind of fey overall, because, you know, pixie fairy kind of style thing. But she is close along that line. She is definitely very close. I've not seen the uh, particular fan art you're on about there, friendly cat lick. No idea at all. That is a nasty bit of slash. Thank you. I'll get off of that. Oh, I got no healing because of this drone. Okay. Bail, bail, bail. That is not a place for me to hang out in. Thank you. I need to form him down this corridor. There we are. I mean, someone mostly melee dead, anyway. Whew. That is a very good question, friendly cat Like, What is an Eldrazi? That doesn't ring any bells in my book of names, which doesn't really mean a lot, but I don't know it either. Alright, we should be about 10 minutes away now from the next arbitration option. Again, we're not quitting at this point because otherwise we'll be forced to go into a defense one, and that's just a big no. That's just a no. That minute 30 says Evo. Perfect. All right. What we'll do, we'll take this to the 80 minute mark. We should be able to get to 80 minutes. We'll try and get there. Oh, those are some beautiful slash boxes as well. And to think these slash boxes are going to get so buffed. Oh, it's going to be great. I perform into the win. Shame about the whole, you know, still really needed to recharge every few shots, but yeah. What can you do? What can you do? Oh, yes. Uh, Titania does some of the uh, razor wings as well, those little razor flies. So, yeah, that does come under the summoning aspect as well. Now let's think about it. Another summoner we have is Necros. He does a lot of summoning, but he's obviously down the necromancy route. But we could have something that uses similar conditions along that line as well. Not just transformation, but also the summoning of beasts. Could definitely be a thing. I don't know. As a... Uh a Warframe theme, a Druid is a bit far from most things, I'd say. But then at the same time, we're getting kawaii skateboarded girl, so, you know, everything's up for grabs these days. Really, everything is up for grabs. Additional support has arrived. Now, Evo, calm down. Druid Warframe Oberon? No, 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 no. 
Oberon doesn't transform. Oberon, basically the only nature thing he does is he summons some grass. Hallowed Ground is definitely not a druid thing. That is a clerical paladin thing right there. Radiation damage, basically radiant damage. That again is very, very definitely not a uh, druid thing. Uh, Oberon is a caster paladin. Which is kind of weird because that's not really a thing. Say maybe like a a divine wizard? Nah, that's not quite right either. Oberon doesn't really fit into the the uh, typical five E D and D setup. Oh, do you lag in uh, Railjack Shenzo? That's unlucky. Yeah, Regotama, we are very, very aware. We are indeed very aware. We all watched the trailer. At least a lot of us watched the trailer just early on this stream. I mean, I'd say just early. It was, what, one and a half hours ago now? But we did see the premiere, absolutely. I take you very excited then. I keep seeing all the enemies on my screen, and I realize I'm a mini-map. They're actually all just chained up here. laura has got them on lockdown. I need to go up this way. There we go, that's a bit better. Jolt sideways, I can't track like that. I see, very excited, that's cool. Ah, uh, we are certainly all looking forward to it. For his post Tasha's Beastmaster? Oh, box. That's unfortunate. Uh, I'll be honest, I actually haven't got Tasha's, so I don't know pretty much any of the details inside of it. The only books I have for 5v were the original three, so of course Player's Handbook, Monster Manual, and DMG. And then I have... What's it cousin. called? I think it's Volo's Guide to Monsters I have. That's about it. Yo, Direwolf, thank you very much for following. Glad you're enjoying the channel. And a welcome. Garuda is a freaking vampire? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Now, if you look at it, Garuda's not the only vampire in the game. A large portion of Revenant stuff was also factoring in to vampiric abilities. So Revenant has the ability to enthrall enemies and have those thralls cause yet more thralls. That is very definitely a vampiric ability. Revenant has the ability to turn himself into mist on demand and also has lifesteal. There you go, that's another vampiric ability. The whole just becoming resistant to damage, that's just kind of an overall defensive thing. Mesmer is skin. Mesmer as a name, then mesmerizing. Again, that just comes across a little bit vampiric side. It's a weaker tie, but it is there. And then we got laser discos because they went, oh shit, this is not supposed to be a vampire, it's supposed to be sentient. Um, lasers. Just lasers. And I don't mind the lasers, but yeah. Trinity a bard or a priest? Oh, Trinity is definitely a cleric. Trinity can protect people, Trinity can heal people. Cleric. As for Banshee, uh, Banshee, let's see. So she can cast Silence. She can create area of effect damage with her abilities. She can be subtle, as in she silences her stuff. She can knock people around with a nice uh, thunder wave, it feels like. And she can damage boost stuff with Sonar, which also detects them. So Banshee is a sorcerer. Also, Banshee is kind of niche in what she does and is overall a bit weak. Ah, that sounds like Sorcerer to me. So yeah, Banshee's a Sorcerer. Vault will be some kind of Stormlord. Uh, Vault is a electric-themed caster. Straight up, lightning-themed caster. He has the ability to cast Haste. He has the ability to cast uh, Lightning Bolt. 
So yeah, he, he definitely comes up under just your normal casters. Uh, given that he can do his electric shield, I might even go so far as to say he's an abjuration caster. Which also can uh, do evocations. You know, the whole lightning side. Excalibur's your plain old fighter. Excalibur's not just your plain old fighter. Excalibur is your boring fighter. Excalibur is your champion fighter. He's like, you know what? I, ju I just want to swing a sword and call it a day. And I just, I just get so tired of that so instantly. Ash's way of Shadow Monk. Yeah, that sounds about right. That does sound about right. Nick's an illusionist. Ah, uh, Enchantress. Not the illusionist, Enchantress. Enchantress. Because she can turn a person to her side. That's a big part of Nyx's thing. She also makes it where enemies focus on her less, effectively charming them. You can turn them all on each other with her... Uh, what's it? Chaos, I think it's called? I forget the name of it. I don't use Nyx that often. Yeah, definitely an Enchantress for Nyx. Harrow is a priest. Uh, Harrow is a uh, war cleric, I'd say. You know, what was his personal fire rate buffs? He can provide heals, but it's not a big focus for him. He can provide energy, but he mostly cares about that for himself. And he has to do some killing to get some work done. I'd say he's a war cleric. Where would Gara and Titania fit here? That's a very good question. Uh, Gara. Feels like a little bit of a gish. Uh, she's got her casting ability, but that goes into a then melee attack with her glass longsword. She's got the ability to put some defense onto herself, kind of like a mage armor. So that's certainly up on that side there. Uh, she's got some illusion spell built in. No, sorry, enchantment spell. Her passive is a stunning effect, basically. Her blinding effect. And then she's got some serious area denial with her Mass Witchify. I'd say she's a bit of a gish. Yeah, Battle Mage, something along that line. Blade Singer, not really. She doesn't have Blade Singer traits so much. I mean, kinda. Kinda. It is hard to say because we are talking across systems here. Yeah. Bit of a stretch. I feel sorry for the five people watching who have absolutely no idea what any of us are talking about right now. If you want one of those, let me know. As for Titania, we said Titania is borderline druid. Gorse zoom zoom guy. Ooh. Gorse can get some serious defenses. He can go very, very fast. He can use a bit of area magic. But mostly he's about his defenses and speeding himself up. I wonder if Gorse is actually a Elements Monk. Because he can do cold, he can do heat, he focuses on those things. He can get some serious defense and gain overall strength and energy from engagements. And he has a secondary resource pool, which no one else has. You know, his battery. He feels like a way of four Elements Monk. Just... He doesn't seem to focus on the elements too much because Way of Four Elements is also terrible, you know? <laughs> We'd like it to be better, but it's really not. We're fitting the pistols? I mean, everyone's allowed a weapon here, so let's... Well, again, we're not getting perfect matchings here. Atlas uh, Way of Four Elements. He's just an Earth focus. He's very heavy hitting. Uh, he can summon two Rumblers to assist him. He can petrify enemies. Honestly, it feels like he's just kind of some Weregorgon. <laughs> what about Mag? So Mag's a full caster, out and out. You know, magnetic focus, shields, restoration from her abilities, armor stripping, so she's a debuffer, she's a controller. She's definitely right up there on the magic side of things. What kind of magic? Hard to say. 
Mag doesn't fit in anywhere all that well. Drono saying Stunning Strike on Petrify. That's the thing. Stunning Strike is targeted. Petrify is an area. It's more of a spell. Or just a general ability, I suppose. Good to go on next army. What is the next army then, Nick? Because if it's a disruption, I am all over that shit. Who would be the rogue? Ooh, that's a good question. That's a good question. Rogues were looking for bonus damage, which, yes, Evara does do. Evara does use bow. Evara can go invisible on Another demand. Satisfied customer. Yeah, Evara does fit the bill for rogue very nicely. Literally has pickpocketing. Yeah, you're very right. Yeah, Evara is definitely a rogue. There's no question about it. She's a rogue. Can someone have a check? What is the next arbitration, please? And as well, Manchos. Mad, 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 da, 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 da. You there. The Mad T Jaws. <laughs> Thank you very much for the follow. Glad you're enjoying the channel. I'm not quite sure how I can pronounce your name too accurately, so I'm just going to go with that. Excavation? Is this horror pastry? Oh! Your name is very accurate. Excavation. Oh. Oh, how do we go from defense to excavation? That just makes me sad. Uh, Evo saying it's actually interception. Okay, interception is more doable. It's still absolutely terrible, but it's more doable. The objective can't just get nuked for nothing. All right, 80 minutes, we switch out. 80 minutes, we're going to move over to doing the interception. Zomtronic, no, 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 no. Getting gorse is only hell for people who don't learn how to do an, a disruption correctly. If you don't know how to do a disruption, getting gorse is hell. If you learn how to do a disruption, it's pissing easy. It just takes a bit of time. He is on the higher end of farming time, granted. But the actual doing of it, learn how to do disruption, you're fine. I mean, they straight up move disruption off the uh, the main route through the star chart. Because it used to be between Sedna and Void. And they moved it off to the side because they thought, oh, too many new players are struggling with it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not that hard. And yo, Martian Noob, thank you very much for subscribing to the channel. Welcome indeed, and enjoy your lovely new blue badge. Thank you for my dude. Glad you're enjoying the channel so much. Those who've got it, enjoy your emotes with that. Praise Clem indeed. The giver of gifts. We're looking for a good gift in 20 seconds time. I'm hoping it's Vitus Essence. Uh, the gems can be a bit irritating, friendly Catholic, but you can do the same as what I did when I was uh, earlier on in life. In warfare life, that was. <laughs> and that was to straight up buy the gems from other players. They're not that expensive and it beats dealing with the grind if you've not already dealt with it. Or a former. Okay, that's a scam. That's not what I wanted. Also, that's not the exit. Alright, let's get out of here. We're at the 80 minute mark. We don't need to be sticking on this one no more. It's time to switch over to some interception. And a nice lower level mission, you know. Reset those levels a bit. We've been going for a while on this one. What level are we facing? Can I see an enemy somewhere? I hear one. What level are you? 220. Alright, good to know. Um, the exit is not that way. Which way is the exit? What happened to my oh, okay, it is this way. Ooh, I need to pay attention. I need to pay attention. I'm taking hurt. Ah, there we go. Fun fact, you can actually slide under those things. As long as you crouch. Oh. Mission complete. There we go. That was a bit of a chunk, wasn't it? Woo! We went for a while there. How many was that? 27 Oricon cells with no booster whatsoever. Yeah. Alright, you take care, Beard. We'll see you another time. Have a good one. 
and let's update the Riven Raffle first. Zontronic now has three Riven Raffle tickets. There we go. 10,000 Endo plus a few sculptures from that. That is no small amount of Endo. And 36 Vitus Essence. Nice. 36 Vitus. Even got 56, but you know, they are boosters. Bid giving me the random primary weapon with potato. Thank you, Beard. That is very nice of you to do just before you go. All right. All right, let's deal with it. What have you saddled me with? Let's have a look here. This is the wrong spinner. Get this. I just need to grab the spinner for this. Will be just a moment. And this is you. There we go. All right, then. Let's see which primary weapon am I going to be stuck with now. It is the Bold Saw. I think that might be the lowest level weapon on this list. The Bold Saw. Oh boy. Alright, that's, uh, that's going to be a bit rough. Thank you, Beard. Thank you, you've made that one quite difficult for me. Let's update these River Raffle tickets before I have to deal with that, shall we? That was a very, very rough result right there. So, Lin has grabbed himself two Riven Raffle tickets, and Shenzu has a couple more as well. So, Lin's up to four. And it's Shenzu. Now has two. And Terry on Twitch has also grabbed himself some. Terry on Twitch. There we go, I think I got your name right. You got yourself two tickets there. Another Excellent. satisfied customer. Bolt or Prime at least? I don't have the Bolt or Prime, no. No, it's going to be standard Bolt or. You were saying, can you get into the RB? I'll have to double check in a second. I should be able to. And Emphatic Echo, thank you very much for the follow. Telos Bolt or. Oh, I might have a Telos Bolt or, but I don't think it has a potato in it. Which, if it doesn't have a potato in, I am just kind of screwed. Uh, Nickaroo, thank you very much for uh, choosing the random weapon any owned primary. So now, next mission, after this one, I'm going to have to uh, roll out the bolt saw. Uh, sorry, roll out to another weapon. Guys, you, you can't override someone else's spin. That's the trick here. You guys are stacking this up for future missions. You're messing me up here. <laughs> Let's have a quick check, though, because Evo has raised a good point. Can I actually access... It. I can't. Oh. That's weird. That's really weird. Why can't I access the uh, new arbitration that's come out? If I say I have to get out before the reset? No, surely not. Surely not. It's on Mercury? Yeah, I should be able to see it in the list though. That's the point in horror. I mean, can we just see it? It's not visible, no. That's... What? Alright, is there someone who currently has access to the arbitration that could possibly taxi me to it? <laughs> because uh, this is being a bit weird. Did I get the Unreformer BP with Testion? I think I completely forgot to. I'll be honest, I don't really use Umbra Formers all that often. I don't customer. focus on my builds that heavily, with the exception of Lavos. You know, Lavos got the Umbral treatment. Let me just look at that beauty. Otherwise, normally, yeah, nah. Yeah, this is a bit of a sickler. This has kind of thrown a, a wrench into the works. I can't exactly do an arbitration if an arbitration decides it doesn't exist. Broken Glassman, thank you very much for the follow. Glad you're enjoying the channel and this awkward moment. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I mean, at the moment, we've got here a random Boltor. After this, we've got another random primary. After this, we've got then another random primary. And also, we've got a random frame from Yislis I now have to do. This is going to get a little bit spicy. Evo saying relog also doesn't help. Well, that's no good. 
horror play streak in taxi. All right, horror, send me a message in game and I will invite you in. That I made the spanner in the works. I think I did. did. Is that not what I said, Zomtronic? Is that not what I said? Because that is the phrase. I'm fine. Pretty sure I said that. Now you got me thinking. That's some edgy Lavos fashion? I mean, come on. Why would I not go for something like this? The guy basically has lava in his name. You change the O to an A. Now you just put a little tick down here. It'll be, it'll be a lowercase A. And that, that's basically him. Also, what the hell is that? <laughs> um, this is your Foreman upgrade. I now have a Foreman Dokram Scythe combination. Jesus Christ, you get hit with that, you're knocked into the next dimension. Uh oh. <laughs> you know what, Zomtronic? That sounds like an idea. If I can't get carried in by Horror Pastry into the arbitration, then yeah, I will absolutely help you out. Oh, I fixed it. Ah, oh, that's a shame. All right. So, this list has given me a random frame. Let's see what you have randomized me into, and if it's Excalibur, I'm ignoring it. Any other frame, I'll take it. If it's Excalibur, I am genuinely just going to ignore it. I'll spin it again if it's Excalibur. It is Trinity. Okay. All right, then. Trinity it is. I can work with Trinity. I have had Trinity Prime for a very long time. Let's make some more use out of her. I also apparently have no former on her. Okay. Uh, what is this? Standard build looks good enough to me. Yeah, whatever. If it goes wrong, it goes wrong. Let's grab the bolt tool. Now, this isn't just the worst bolt or, you know, it is a two former bolt or, which means I can fit some stuff in here. Wow, this shows you how long I've not used it. I don't even have my upgraded serration in it. Oh, this is painful to look at. Alright, um, let's take out Vile Acceleration. Get this into here proper. Do I have a seven? Unless, wait, did I have a Telos Boltor? I do. Okay, cool. Telos Boltor. Is this an up? It's not potatoed. I'm not using that. It's not potatoed. It bot. It's not potatoed. It's not formed. I'll just have to use a standard Boltor. Okay, this is gonna hurt. This is gonna hurt. We got speed trigger, we got serration, we've got viral, we got multi shot, we got split chamber doing its thing. Now, I kind of want to use the eight capacity as is rather than switching over to primed cryo rounds because that would bring me down to six. Let's see what I can get for that though to make it worth it because possibly I might just have to plummet. Uh. I'll need to level that up. I'll get to it. Okay, yeah, no, you know, I'll, I'll take the Vigilante further for the Fire 8 on the 6. I'll switch up to Prime Cry rounds. There we go. This is the best I can make this. This is what you've done to me, Beardface. I know you can't even hear me right now, but this is what you've done to me. I can deplete Armour of Trinity's Augment. That's true. Are we against the Grenier? I thought it... Oh wait, Mercury, 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 Mercury is Grenier. Shit, I do need to do this. Okay, well at least I can still use these weapons. You know, I've still got those. No one said to roll out the secondary or melee. So I can stick with these. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to try hard a little bit and switch to a new core. Because that's kind of going to be a big deal. Radiation, viral, heat. Yep, don't mind if I do. And uh, we'll stick with the Astarte. And what I'll do as well is switch this over to Naramon. So now I can get the full benefit of my Astarte. Oh yeah, that's going to be good. Nick, don't you bloody well dare. Don't you bloody well dare. Uh, let's grab Helios as well because we are going to want to have all of the crits. There we go. Alright, we're set. Now, does anyone else want to join in on this Arbitration. I'm hoping that Horror Pastry can get us there. Does anyone else want to be joining in on that? 
Because if so, now is the time to send a message so we can invite you in. It's going to be Interception. We're going to get Vitus Essence. Plot Twist, I won't use the Boltor. Oh, what are you taking me for? I'll use the Boltor at least like 5% of the time. Maybe even 6%, you know? If it wasn't Arby's, then you would. Nick, you're one of the people who tried to put me into this place. And you're not even going to sign up to join it? Huh. Oh, yes. Thank you, Fenomeral. Let's get rid of that Fluctus. I don't even know how that got there. I don't use the Fluctus at all. There we go. Morselon. Yeah, I need to form this. Oh, dear God. That's horrible. But it's better than a Fluctus. All right. No. Uh, Horror Base Street, start the mission. Shenzhou's trying to screw us over. Quick, run. Start the mission. Start the mission. Aha! We've beaten you, Shenzo. We are out of here, and we are actually going into the arbitration. Beat you, DE. Beat you. Random weapon of. 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 <laughs> What's of? I can't equip an of. There you go, I used it. Alright, if this is particularly painful, I will end up to be- Oh my god. I'm reloading already? What? Uh, that's terrible. Oh god, that's so terrible. Guys, you do need to actually tell me which slot you're randomizing. I can't randomize of or owo. That's, that's just not an option. You do need to choose a slot. <laughs> Alright, well. That firing sound? Oh, yeah. It, it sounds heavy. And then it just doesn't do crap. Just the drone to not even come around the corner. Like, bruh, how am I supposed to shoot you if you're not even here? God, this is taking forever to capture. Alright, so we're getting some randomizers out the wazoo at the moment, guys. This is going to be a little bit difficult. Once we reach the point that I can no longer fire the bolt saw, I think it might be time to dip, you know? If I actually cannot kill enough for that, then yeah. Nope. That is a very big glass wall, like, holy hell. How much do you need? Oh, we've got two Garas at it. Yeah, we've got a Prime and Wukong Prime join us. I'm not even seeing stuff to shoot. Hello. There's something... Ah, the drone. It is no longer a drone. Well, I hope you needed energy, because that was instant. So yeah, the Bolt Saw is a very early game weapon. I have a couple former in it, and I have a potato in it, so it is improved up beyond the minimum. But it is still an early game weapon. Which means you cannot expect all that much from it. As you can see, I, I'm hitting, but it is taking basically everything that this gun has got to offer. I mean, look at this Leech Xmas. What am I supposed to do with that? There we go. Eventually. Eventually, we can take him out. And then someone else just kind of nukes the map again, because... Yeah. I think what we'll do... Uh... With regards to those of you who've picked a random weapon but haven't actually kind of 
informed me as to which one, I'm just going to end up having to refund your channel points for those picks. Because I can't exactly randomize Uru. And there's a sentence I never thought I'd say. Oh, we lost C. Whoops, my bad. I was supposed to be defending that. Instead, I was blinded by glass. And do I have a baiting link equipped? I don't think I do, no. I can cast link, but it's not draining armor. But that's fine. I don't anticipate sticking this one out too long. Uh, I'll give it two rounds. I'll give it two rounds, but honestly, Interception is not my favorite at the start. And I'm using Trinity with a goddamn Boltor. You know? That ain't sticking around. <laughs> Lion of Khmer. Also, amazing name. I get the reference. You are a man of culture. Or a woman of culture. I don't judge. You are a person of culture. But, uh... I don't believe I really can randomize Oru. I think that is actually just a bit beyond me. I'm the first person who knows what that is. Dude, it's one of my favorite authors. I have a big old compendium of loads of short stories. There's a huge tome of them. Absolutely amazing writer. And for those of you who are not familiar with who we're talking about, seriously, once the stream is done, don't go anywhere just yet. That'd be rude. Once the stream is done, you better be Googling customer. the line of Khmer. Rendezvous with Rama, that was the one that got me into Clark. Amazing. And yo, Zomtronic, thank you for um, finally following. <laughs> I swear I've seen you around more than a little bit. Welcome indeed to the club and more properly now. And you did that just to pick a frame. God damn it, we're going to be here forever on these pick items, aren't we? I'm not ending the stream until we've got through all these picks. What is it about? So, Arthur C. Clarke is an amazing sci-fi writer. He basically invented various concepts. Uh, honestly, one of the top dudes out there. He basically came up with the idea of a geostationary satellite and a space elevator. That was his love child of an idea. Not love child, a brain child of an idea. Extremely, extremely accomplished author who also came up with one of the best distinctions between sci-fi and fantasy I've ever read. And if you have not encountered any of his stuff that likes sci-fi stories, I'm not going to say you're missing out. I'm going to say you've just gained access to a whole new world of amazing, amazing bloody sci-fi because you've just learned about Arthur C. Clarke. I am really upset that I've never got to meet such a wonderful writer. I don't know too much about his history, to be quite honest. He's great. Line of Khmer specifically is a longer short story. It's almost... Almost into the novella territory. But uh, the Line of Khmer was a very in-depth look at a, a, a possible approach to a world where scarcity is pretty much on its way out. And looks at the reality behind what could happen for certain people if that scarcity has not yeah, scarcity hasn't solved their problems basically where do they still end up going as well as various other tits and tails all tied together I, I can't begin to do it justice because I don't want to spoil anything but it's just a great damn short story go read it when you get the chance I don't need to be sponsored for this kind of shit. Arthur C. Clarke, just amazing. And yes, Asimov is right up there as well, absolutely. Asimov has not been done justice by sci-fi movies made after his books. He is an incredible writer and also is an incredible scientist for his non-fiction work as well. Incredibly accomplished fan. But those two are right away up there. For all that I like of these writers, I'll be honest, I'm not one of those stands who knows every detail about everything they've ever done, so there is plenty still for me to experience from their works, absolutely. And I'm dipping out here, I'm definitely dipping out at this point. 
I'm done with the whole Trinity Ball tour. It got uninteresting very quickly, not gonna lie. <laughs> Alright, Patty Street, you can enjoy it, I'm out. Seems we're all out, okay. The influence one has. I think I'm saying the Rama FMV game is actually really good. FMV? Not familiar. I was saying it's my first introduction to him outside of knowing about the 2001 movie. Yeah. There was, the number of reward already received. It's a good thing I dipped out. Reward already received. Reward already received. That is some grade A bullshit right there. Alright, who is it that wanted Gorse? I'm getting your Gorse. Alright. <laughs> you cannot defeat the DE grind machine. I want to use the grind machine. The grind machine said no. The grind machine rejected my ability to grind. We're at new levels of defeat here. Alright. So, if someone wanted to farm Gorse, if you're still here, let me know. We can absolutely get you Gorse. And if not, we'll do something else. It's time to grab all of these randoms that have been rolled. And everything else in the process. Is it all randoms or have there been any Riven Raffle tickets? Nope, it's all randomizers. Okay, cool. Zontronic, yeah, it was yourself. All right, send me a message in game. I'll invite you into the squad. We're going to get you some Gorse stuff. And if anyone else needs to get Gorse, send me a message in game right now. I'll get you into the squad. We'll get you some pieces. Uh, I have to be a vial of random weapon in primary and potato secondary. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can handle this. I can handle this. Well, maybe I can. Who's to know? So first of all, let's grab pick a frame of Vara. That was picked there by Zontronic. How can you get in on the gorse farm? Oh, can you get in? Yes, you absolutely can get in on that uh, horror pastry. Let me just invite you in right now. Brand recent invite. There we go. And it's Zomtronic. Just send me a message in game, Zomtronic. So, from the top here, we have got random weapon any owned primary by Nikaru. So, let's roll the primary. Just grabbing that now. And it was any primary, wasn't it? Let me just double check. Uh, yeah, any primary. Oh god, that could be anything in my arsenal. What's my name in game? It is The Kengineer. So here is the spinner. You see how many weapons are on this list? You see how many primary weapons I could be saddled with in just a moment? Let's see what we get. We've got... Oh no... Scourge. Is this even a viable weapon? Oh no. <laughs> okay, Scourge it is. Cool. Let's get rid of that spinner. Let's equip that one before I forget. Oh dear. Yeah, if you want to send me a message in game without me being on your friends list, you type... I'm going to pop it into chat here. It's slash w space the engineer. And then whatever. That didn't even send, did it? No, it didn't even send. Why didn't it send? Twitch, why you got me like this? Oh, there we go. It just didn't want to send on my side. It's just come up on the other side. There we go. That's weird. Uh, Sashin said melee. Yeah, well, let's have a look at where we're at. Uh, I've got to tick off Nikaru's choice of Scourge. Uh, we got Another random bolt off from Nick, so that's going to roll over to the next one. Shenzo said melee. Right, let's roll the melee. Mr. Cactus, thank you very much for the follow. Welcome indeed. Now, Shenzo did any owned melee. Oh, God. Any melee. I have quite the list for this. Oh, this is going to hurt, guys. What have you done to me? You have given me... 
The Thorax. All right, that is a named Zor, which might be good news, might not be good news. Let's find out. What Zor is the Thorax? The Thor... Oh, no. It's a machete. Is it even a machete? I don't... Actually, wait, is it a machete or a... It's a modded, that's what it is. It is, it's a machete. Okay. Cool. I've got a... Oh, no, potato! No! No! No potato, Melly! Ah! Oh, this is... Ah! Okay. Alright, this is... This is tough. We're two for two on uh, no potatoes. That's uh, that's not what I wanted to have happen, to be quite honest. I was hoping the game would be a little bit nicer on me, but it's not going to do that. And then, let's see, who picked the secondary? Islis picked the secondary. All right, Islis, let's bring up the secondary. You've said with potato. Thank fuck. <laughs> I am going to swear at that point. This deserves it. Yeah, don't worry, guys. I have a list of them on my screen here. I have a list. So your uh, requests don't go anywhere. I have them until I confirm them. I'll absolutely not be losing any. It just takes time to work through them all. But here we go. Let's have a look then. You've given me... Yes! The gaze. Alright, I can absolutely work with that one. Absolutely work with that. Let's grab it. Oh, not Gaza. That's a completely different thing. You're saying this doesn't look like a machete? Well, here's the thing, Gislis. You are 100% correct. This doesn't look like a machete at all. But it is a machete. So, go figure. You know? They had to call it something. They called it a machete. I, um, I would have called it a golf club, to be quite honest. But it's a machete. Ah, uh, yeah. This is the loadout. We've got Ivara, Scourge, Observe, which is a uh, gaze kit gun, and Thorax, which is a ugly looking machete looks like a shillady I'll take your word for it to be quite honest I will take your word for it I have no idea what you mean or what that looks like really I only know a shillady as a spell in Dungeons Dragons because I'm a nerd all right let's make sure we got these modded this counts as modded doesn't it yeah this counts as modded should have made it into a low rage hammer. I think there is another hammer. This is the thorax here is a crunch. If I just go crunch real quickly, you'll see there is another one which is more of a hammer. But this is the one handed one, which isn't. Yeah, Nick, I got the uh, gaze back as my random secondary. Absolutely. Very, very lucky on that regard. All right. What I'm going to do with this, I'm going to go for a heavy attack build. We go this, this, this. That'll work. Is it rule to not use a catalyst? Yes. So if someone selects any weapon and I get one that's not already got a catalyst in, then I cannot put a catalyst into it. It's on me for not having already put one there. That's part of the challenge. If I want to allow you guys to jump in on that and give me some nasty stuff, I'm going to have to deal with that nasty stuff. That's on me. This will give me at least a uh, heavy attack. As you see, we're already over the uh, crit threshold there before it's even kicked in with the uh, heavy attack bonus. So it's going to go nice and high up to what, about 192%. This also has a guaranteed slash on its heavy attack. Only on part of it, but it's still there. So this is going to give us some work, and I've got Exodia Contagion for some more stuff as well. The reason I'm going for Sacrificial Steel instead of Blood Rush is because I'm an idiot. Actually, I should probably just do Blood Rush. Yeah. Oh, no, wait, no. No, I need to... I can't think about the combo because I've got no way of maintaining the combo. Yeah, I, I do need to go for just a heavy hitter. In which case, I'm going to go Vazarin for the defense. That's going to work. Alright, this is my situation. This is what I got. This is it. That's everything I've got. Uh, Ivara, let's make sure Ivara is good. Let's see what we can use. Uh, this is a Rolling Guard Umbral Intensify Empowered Quiver setup. And honestly, I'm liking the feeling of this. 
Spell Strike Heavy Blow? Can't fit him. I haven't got the space. Why Blood Rush when a heavy attack build? If you go Blood Rush with combo efficiency, you can keep up most of your combo, and therefore you're going to get a load more crit chance. I'll be going into it in full detail on Saturday, because there's a video coming out on it. Don't you worry, guys. Uh, consequence and Energize? No, I don't want Consequence. I want to be using... I don't know, actually, no. Arcane Strike. No, that's a terrible idea. Uh... Beck, I don't know. Sonic, Grace, why not? If I live, I live. I could really do with some overall survivability in this, so I'm gonna drop that one, to be quite honest. Get me some vitality up in here, and with eight left, do I have something for an eight that's actually worth fitting? Don't know that I do. Yeah, this ain't looking great, is it? Arc of Velocity, no one cares about that. Another Vitality. I can get back some of that strength. Yeah, that's probably about the best I've got. Looking at this. Oh, this is going to be an absolute nightmare, isn't it? Adaptation would be decent. I mean, you're not wrong, but... Yeah. Nah. This ain't the best build, but... I mean... I'm bringing this to a goddamn uh, disruption. None of this is good. None of this is good. This is all a mistake. Uh, Helios Prime. No, we don't want to be using that. I'm going to be bringing another satisfied Prime. customer. Why not? It's done me well normally. It'll do me well again today. Baskerjill, who sounds a little bit like some kind of American medicine. Thank you very much for the follow. Welcome to the channel. I hope I've not insulted you too much just there. All right, let's do this. Enough messing around. So I'm trying to say, I don't know what level this is, so I'm bringing Rhino. Uh, yeah, this is about as high as the star chart goes, so, you know, don't die. Shall we do an Axie Fish here? No. <laughs> Just no. We've done enough randomizing to get here. Let's make this happen. We've still got some more randoms to get through as well after this. We're going to have to do another mission to use up all the randomizers on this today. Oh boy! Steel Path? No, I didn't leave it on Steel Path. No, I didn't. No, no, I didn't leave it on Steel Path. Don't do that to me, Eve. <laughs> I checked the level of the mission. This isn't Steel Path. Right? No, this isn't Steel Path. No, this isn't Steel Path. No. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Oh, uh, you think Vara can sell forever, do you? Yeah, she's not going to sell forever against a... a uh, Disruption, uh, Demolisher, that's the names. Well, welcome. Welcome indeed then, Vasco I'm not too far away, geographically speaking, on the south end of Britain. Uh, if I look a little bit around the corner of the coast, I might just be able to see Portugal. I am 80% sure this isn't Steel Path. Okay, yeah, no, this isn't Steel Path, look at this, that's fine. Alright, cool. Also, what is up with this? I have raw? I have raw on my Avara. <laughs> How much damage does this do? Uh oh. Well, I can kill with it. That is a lot more than I expected. I can actually kill with this. I don't go in here. That goes in this one. I right, no sweat. Yeah, look at this. Oh, let's roll in guard so I stop dying to that. Thank you. Oh, God, dying. Hi there. Hi there. I'll take that, thank you. Let's cloak up. Oh, we don't need the red key. I'll just hold on to it. Don't need to cloak. Is this a bow build of Ara? This is not a bow build of Ara, no. Yeah, I don't mean to drop you. Smack. I mean, that seemed pretty effective. Look at that. Smack, smack, smack. 
This isn't with Roar even. I don't know what I was scared about. Defense complete. I didn't even see defense happen. But yeah, this is a genuine Raw Evara, and I'm kind of surprised I even made it. I mean, you can see it's it's got some effectiveness to it. I'm just going to cloak up. Don't mind me. Come here. Oh, shit, I didn't mean to sprint. I mean, you look at that. That's, that's kind of getting stuff done, isn't it? I just walked into a meat grinder. And now, my special trick. Ta da! <laughs> no one said I couldn't use Operator. What's my favourite Warframe? Lavos. Definitely Lavos. Second place Wukong, third place Equinox. You know what this arena needs? One really big uh, zipline. Yeah, I've got three mods and I'm killing. Like, effortlessly. Oh, I have a red key as well. I should probably be using that. Another satisfied customer. JP, thank you very much for following. Glad you're enjoying yourself here. Welcome to the channel. Melee, 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 thank you. Oh, I was going to use my operator power, but it's done already. Uh, the other one is far away. We kind of need to be there. Or someone else can deal with it. Okay, fair enough. You're already two months into the farm for Lavos? Ow. I thought it was just a syndicate thing. It shouldn't take you two months, right? I mean, just look at this. Look at this. This guy's surviving a little bit. That's because he's an Xmas. Let me... Never mind, I won't deal with him. He's already dead. Okay, then. That's cool. That's cool, too. But yeah, melee is a little bit ridiculous. Max Mac. Mac. And this is a Zor which has been gilded, but doesn't have any uh, format, doesn't have any potato. Oh yeah, the minerals can be a pain to find if you're not too familiar with the process, absolutely. Look at this. I'm just carving through them. Yeah, I'm invisible, but I'm a Vara with basically minimal modded weapon and I'm on the last planet of the goddamn star chart ah uh, no how do they keep waking up who's waking them up normally don't get out of that so quick I y'all dead Yeah, standing cap is absolutely a pain when it comes to uh, syndicates. Which, by the way, for anyone who is not uh, at max rank already with the Entrati Syndicate, make sure you are working on that. You have got until Tuesday if you want to have access to the new helmet segment straight away. Get onto that, get your leveling up on that. And Lone AI, thank you very much for following. Welcome indeed to the channel. Let's find some more keys. Let's get these gorse parts dropping. They are going to start dropping from this round onwards. Uh, we're going to get those. I'm going to get them as fast as we can. Let's some keys. Oh. I'm going to try hard. Let's use the laser of it. The actually modded weapon that I brought today. Not that impressive. I mean, we don't know the fullest of the details, but the main thing is it's actually having access to it. That's what I want. You know? I imagine you get a 300% uh, strength boost. Oh, 
Okay, I'm just going to drop the key. <laughs> Imagine you get something like a 300% strength boost on Ivara with this kind of a setup already. I mean, I just continuously fired my laser at him. Over this way. There we go. Yep, there's the Syndicate stuff coming as well. Syndicate stuff, it's actually a little bit easier to farm, you know, the main Syndicates, because you just kind of get it over time. But yeah, don't overspend your stuff if you want to get it on release, absolutely. I mean, the uh, the Syndicates themselves, they're not new, ca Trendy Catholic. They're not new Syndicates, so it's not a new grind, it's just more of a reason to do the grind that was already there. Which I don't mind, to be quite honest. I don't mind that side of things. I mean, if, if this is a game where you don't want to be gaining resources and materials for the stuff that's made available to you, you might be playing the wrong game. Uh, I mean, who am I to judge? Aside from, you know, content creator who knows quite a bit about the game, but who am I to judge otherwise? Let's grab this key before it vanishes. Thank you. That speed boost kind of threw me off. Yes, Nick, you do need to get Max Intrati to be able to access the new helmet buffs coming out. I don't think you need it for the new uh, abilities, the five new abilities, but for the invigorations, yes, you do. Yeah, even that Xmas has absolutely no chance. I'm Ivara, come at me, guys. I got you. I'm not even trying to help out with the defense, I'm just smacking enemies. Another satisfied customer. Yo! Thuridges? 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 Sorry, English brain can't handle that name, but welcome indeed to the channel. I'm going to go with Thuridges. Or Thuis. Is it Thuis? I, I, I need a translation guide on this one. Help me out, please. <laughs> I prefer to be able to pronounce usernames, and I don't know where I'm starting on that one, to be honest. Do I know how the new helmet system is going to work. Uh, that's part of the reason I've not actually done a video on it, is we have very little detail. We know that there's going to be three frames a week that you can get buffs on. We know those buffs are going to be random. And we know that every ten selections, you can then select a frame to buff for yourself. We don't know if you get to pick all three, or if it's just one of them. We don't know if you can toggle it on and off. We don't know when the week reset is going to be. We have a lot of information missing, to be quite honest. But it exists. And hello, Thuridges. And that's how you stop a demolisher in its tracks twice. Easy peasy. I was going to say, I have Mastery 12 and the weapon needs Mastery level 15. Which weapon is this one? Because Mastery 15 is very high. I'm not saying it's wrong, I'm just saying it's very high. Not many weapons at that. Low info for an update next week? Yeah, you're not kidding. We're missing info about how the Arcanes actually work, as I mentioned in my uh, update video. We're missing info about some of the Parazon mods, what they're actually triggered by. D have missed out a lot of the crucial information. With the new helmet stuff, the five new abilities, we know basically none of the stats. We don't know the energy cost of all but one of them, and that one was just because they happened to show it in the video by chance. Uh, we don't know the fuller details, we don't know the range of the new loot finder one, there's a lot of details which I'm going to be going over in fine detail once it comes out. But before then, we don't really know. You know jack shit. saying if it's a weak reset they'll probably be the same as all of the weekly resets what about de made you ever think that things would be the same you're expecting consistency in something completely new please there's a possibility they don't know where that weak turnaround code actually is i don't, I don't want to badmouth them too much in any kind of regard but there are some areas of consistency and kind of overall quality control 
that they don't seem to have a handle on, really. I'm talking the likes of turning ash into a multi-day farm. Or making it where you go into a void storm and everything just explodes around you to the point of horrible existence. Where reactant just simply wasn't dropping measurably badly on release. To the point that QA should have seen it in an instant. I, I don't want to rag them on too much. I'm not one of those jaded people who say everything is terrible. But at the same time, they do certainly earn some reserved concern. Let's go with that. Reserved concern. Info about the next Nightwave series? We're going to get none on that for a while. They've been working on this big update. We're going to get nothing about Nightwave for a while yet. That's my bet. It could well be one of their next things, but yeah, that's about it. Maybe they're doing this so we won't make a mistake of overhyping it, said Friendly Catholic. I mean, maybe. Except they kind of put it out there ahead of time to give us information on the stuff and to solicit feedback. You can't solicit feedback on something you don't give details about. It's just not a thing. It's like, what if I said to you, hey guys, I'm going to be introducing five new emotes and they're going to be coming out in two weeks time. What do you think of the new emotes? You'd be like, yeah, but what are the emotes? We need to know what the emotes are to give us opinions on it. But like, well, the emotes are going to have some graphics on them. That's not all the detail. And then it's just silent until they're released. They take feedback? Yeah, absolutely, they do take feedback. I don't know exactly where from or how they measure that feedback. But have a look, for example, at the changes they announced after, what, a few days of the uh, first release? They changed the drain on some of the mods, they changed the stats on some of the mods, so they at least have the appearance of taking feedback. They said it was from feedback, so you know. One would have to conclude that they are taking feedback at least to some extent. Is this saying they know of a stream that farmed for two weeks for Gara Prime? They weren't farming very hard then. One thing I always take with a bit of a grain of salt whenever someone tells me they farm for something for X number of days, weeks, months, is that tells me absolutely nothing about their game time and their efficiency. Tells me absolutely nothing. Because here's the thing, I could say I farm for two weeks for something and I do an hour a week. Okay, I farm for two hours, that's the truth. Which to some people, that's not even a full evening. If someone says they take two weeks to farm something, I do seriously consider their efficiency, what they've done in those two weeks to make it happen, or not happen, as the case may be. Now if that sounds like I'm being overly cautious, that's because I don't like jumping onto the bandwagon of, oh my god, this. Four times a week, three to four hours, whole stream every time. So that's going to be two weeks, four times a week, eight streams, three to four hours, so 24 hours. That's probably on the low end of bad luck, assuming decent efficiency. That's probably on the low end of bad luck. Hey, let's sync. You can get Gara relics from locations usually at around about the 14% mark. And let's say all of them need the rare drop, so you need 10 of those relics. That's not how it works, but let's say you do. 14% is around about 1 in 7, so you need about 70 rounds to get enough relics of the type you're looking for. <clears throat> so you're doing a disruption. We are finishing up round 6 shortly, and we're currently on 16 minutes. Let's say it gets to 18 minutes, 3 minutes around. So 3 minutes... Per relic, 70 times, that's 210 minutes to farm all the relics of one type. Let's say it takes that long for all of them. 210 minutes multiplied by 4, that is 840 minutes. And then you've got to open them all up. You can probably open them all up pretty damn quickly. I'm going to say you can open them up. Uh, we got 40 relics to open up in this calculation we're working with here. 40 relics at... Screw it, 3 minutes apart. 120 minutes. On top of our 840, we're at 960. 
960 minutes is 16 hours. And I'm overestimating there because that's saying that throughout all that time, they're going to have to find the relics themselves and only rely on themselves to get the reward. That they're not working with anyone else. So that's going to be right at the top end. I'm saying 16 hours on the very top end because you should be mitigating so much of that bad luck by having friends with you. So if it takes more than 16 hours of actual efficient grinding, then I'd say they are very unlucky. 16 hours. Now you're saying four times a week, let's say four times a week, three to four hours, let's say three hours. I said that was what, 24 hours? So that puts it a bit higher than I'd expect for bad luck math. Math flex, mate. <laughs> now you see why I have the credentials to put together the videos I do. I actually uh, pay attention to all the math behind this stuff quite significantly. I would say I know it all off by heart, all perfectly. That's why I research stuff. But this is talking about a solo player working on only getting relics through disruption, which is an efficient way of doing it. But then having to crack them open for rare items solo each time. Not accounting for the cost in getting the toy traces, of course. In a group, you'll be getting four times as many relics, and you'll be opening four times as many relics, which in itself makes things literally 16 times faster. So, uh, yeah. Not to put too fine a point on it, but I farmed Gara a lot faster than 24 hours, and that wasn't due to streamer luck. That was due to efficient farming. Get the Nox! Get the Nox! Got it. Good assistance, of course. Be wary of someone who claims that luck hates them. Either they're only focusing on the times where they were unlucky and not the times they were lucky, or they're lying. Like, really. Evo saying I spent a lot on relic packs? Yes, I did, Evo. I'm still accounting for the farming time towards those relic packs. It didn't take me 24 hours to farm up those few syndicate missions and the little bit of steel path we did. That's part of efficient farming. And I was pre-farming, which is less efficient time-wise, but more efficient in getting out on as early as possible. Now, I am conscious time-wise here that we are actually a little bit short on time in that we have gone over. And there are still some randoms I haven't done yet. I don't want to miss you uh, random choices out on that. I feel like that would be unfair. So we're going to finish up. Actually, we just finished the round, so I'm going to dip. Did we get a gorse part? I don't think we did. Damn it. That was unlucky. Yeah, I am aware that we have got some randoms still to roll, so I'm going to just quickly dip this mission. Let's get that last mission in for everyone who's rolled up a random weapon or random frame, whichever it is. I'll have a full look in this moment. Back that guy in the face, because I can't. And we got some Axie Relics. That's good to get. Oh, no, we did get a Gorse piece. Gorse Neuro Optics. I just completely forgot about that then. There we are. Got your One Piece. In 20 minutes, that's not too bad, really. That's not too bad at all. And we did, in 20 minutes there, we did eight waves, so that's less than three minutes per round. I think it was eight. One, two, three, four items. Five, six, seven. Seven or eight. If it was seven, then it's about three minutes around. I'm not sure with disruption. Changes over a little bit too soon at some point. Three minutes around, and people complain about getting gorse pieces. I mean, come on now. Come on on the map. It's not that hard. And it's certainly not 24 hours. Not for most people. Alright, let's have a look here. We have got some uh, randoms. We've also got a Riven Raffle ticket from Zomtronic. Let's put that into here as well before I forget. We will be doing the Riven Raffle draw very soon after this next mission. 
And it is indeed for a Veiled Rifle Riven. Thank you very Another much, Evo, for bringing us that customer. today. And Shaft3, thank you very much for the follow. Welcome indeed to the channel. Lynn the Pin grabbing their fifth and final, I believe, Riven Raffle ticket of today. Max out on that side. Another satisfied customer. Line of Khmer, thank you for follow as well. Still a man of good taste. All right, so we've got two random weapons being rolled. We've got a primary and an uwu. Oh, let's just add on the Lion of Khmer has now got a Raven raffle ticket and Horror Pastry. We've got all of them coming in now. Horror Pastry has himself two Raven raffle tickets. And we got EV133Z has a Ribbon Raffle ticket. Oh, and another one. Shaft 3. This is faster than I can type in, guys. Ah! <laughs> there we go. I think I've caught everyone's tickets there. So, uh, Evo, can you please explain to me what you mean by random weapon Owu? Because if you don't explain to me, I'm just going to delete it. Bar looks like a white lobster. You know, it's funny you should mention that. It is very funny you should mention that. Let me just grab Trinity. There's your other lobster. Or if we go for the normal Trinity skin. Yeah, there you go. There's your other lobster. <laughs> Terry's saying it means I need to rename the weapon. Oh, yeah, that's not happening. That is just not happening. Nope. All right, Evo has decided to not comment other than to say Owu. So, Evo, I'm just going to ignore your thing now. Which brings us just to Nick's re-rolling of a primary. Alrighty. Chaff saying, I'm playing after two years. What should I focus right now? Have you got every Warframe? If not, there's your focus. Get every Warframe, Chaff. That's the first thing you can do to get yourself access to so much more interesting content you probably have already. Let's grab... Uh, now let's have a look here. Was it with potato? Yeah, it is with potato. It's a potato primary. This is the spinner that we are rolling on. And I'll be using the Vermisplice, the primary. Okie okay, dokie. That I can absolutely do. That I can absolutely do. Let's switch off a Trinity because I want to be using Trinity. Let's use Wukong for a bit. Grab our Vermisplicer. Lovingly named Abatha's Grasp. Abatha, by the way, is a StarCraft reference for those of you who don't recognize the name. Abatha is a very weird character in that. Yeah, if you can get the Foreman, Foreman's amazing. <laughs> and Zoptronic saying, I still have no idea how to genuinely do disruption, even though we did it. Uh. I mean, I can do another disruption mission and show you real quickly what I mean by that. Or, or what you do for it. Yeah, let's jump into a disruption real quickly. We'll finish up with that. These weapons should be just fine. Actually, wait. I need to check the build on this one. That's the wrong weapon. Here we go. Grab you. Heavy attack. Uh, more with Shatter Reflex Coil. No, no, no. I don't want the combo. I don't want the combo. Those both combos. Screw you then. Let's grab the uh, Docker run. I can't bother to make a build, so I'm just going to take one that's been made. There we go, that's a made one. Yeah, small ace can be quite fun if you can get packs. The uh, not backs. Our oh, new arbitration is disruption. Oh, it would do that now, wouldn't it, horror? Ah, oh, no. We ain't got the time for that. We ain't got the time for that. We're just going to go into the capital once more. We'll do an axi run. Single axi run. This is how we're finishing off. Some trying saying it feels like I know where they're coming from. I do. That's why it feels like that way. So the way disruption works is uh, at the point that you put in the key, the key, uh, sorry, the demolisher will spawn in one of very few locations. You get a sense for where they are eventually. The more you play it, you figure out where the kind of spawn locations are going to be. Because they tend to be a certain distance away. They won't spawn the closest, they won't spawn the furthest, unless you get a bug like I did once. You get an idea as to where you're looking for them, and then you follow that up 
we're chasing down that location. Do I learn how far I need to chase to be able to hear them? And that's how I track them down. It's really hard to do that when someone runs through the screen. A Wukong is very good for this because, of course, I can fly around. It gives me a lot more speed. Ah, oh, that's not too much. I'm not a fan of this primary weapon. It's not a great one. Now, there are various ways of slowing down uh, demolishers. By far, the most generally effective way is to simply apply lots of cold procs. Get yourself a nice status weapon, secondary or something. Apply cold procs all day long. Because <coughs> cold procs will slow them down. They can't dispel cold procs either. Once they're there, they're just there for the duration. There's nothing the demolisher can do about it. That gives you basically what you need. I can't hear the demolisher yet, so I'm listening around. It's here. It's close. I'm going to use Operator Ability because I don't have Cold on me. Slash. Oh, not enough to kill it. Alright. These guys do have status resistance. So it is a little bit harder with them. There we go. Yeah, that status resistance is quite nasty against this build because my build basically relies on status damage. Oh, someone's already got that key. I'm going to hold on to it for now, but if I see the white one, I'll switch to it. Also, we do not have the um, reactant we need yet. What are my plans with the first video on the update? That'll depend on what I find in the update. There is a lot to go through. I'm hoping that my first video is going to be, I was wrong about the stacking of uh, arcanes. That's very much a we will see. Yeah, I've done all the videos I'm going to do pre-update. The next one coming out is going to be the heavy attack video I've got in the works. Hence why I have this very lovely looking uh, Zor. Once we get the details, you will absolutely have those details from me. Mac. Correct. Uh, I'm going to hold the key. I'm not going to use it straight away because we still don't have enough reactant. There's nine. Yeah, I want to find corrupted enemies. I hear some. There's ten. Okay, cool. I'm on ten. I'll wait for someone else, well, everyone else to get to 10, and then I'm going to activate this key. Because it's only fair. Two people are on it. Leon should be able to get it. He's MR30. He knows what he's doing. Yeah, he got it. Cool. So I'm going to hunt down this demolisher. One spawned out over this way. So I'm going to check this way. Nothing. So it's going to be back this way. Yep, there it is. Is it coming from this side? It's coming from this side. Ah, someone's already killed it. That's your basic process. Someone already killed it for me, but overall you can just kind of use that process of hunting down the spots. Ah, uh, I want to wait once. I'm going to take the former. Sorry. Why not? Actually, no, wait. I think I need to build an Ezra set. Yeah, I think I can finish up another Ezra set. That'd be nice. A line of Chimera is saying a first part of a heavy machete combo. Seems to open enemies up to finishers. Uh, I can't remember if it does or not. More important with the machete one is that it hits four times over, so that's good for applying status. And it's got a guaranteed slash, I think, on the third bit. Let's get out of here. Oop. I'm switching through the pipe work. That is not the sensible way of doing this. I need to pay attention when flying. <laughs> I can't fly that effectively without looking. Alright, let's um get this guy out. He can keep me alive. That is a round of disruption. 
You grab your keys, you find the demolishers, you take out the demolishers. Use cold procs to slow them down unless you've got something more powerful, such as that Operator Arcane. I've completely forgotten the name of. I think it's Magus Lockdown. It's a very, very powerful one for this. We'll just wait for the extraction to go through, and then we'll do today's Riven Raffle Draw. So if you are holding back on getting a ticket, if you're umming and ahhing, now is the time to get it. Make lockdown from Fortuna. There it is then. Perfect. Thank you, EP, for confirming that. So yeah, well, let's have a look. We have got quite a few... Oh, give my mouse back. Game, damn it. We've got quite a few Riven Raffle tickets in today. Let's see. 1, 6, 10, 11... 14, 15, 16, 18, 23, 24, because Madge just come in. That's a lot of tickets in for today. And a couple more are coming in. So, guys, get your last tickets in. This is the final moment before I actually do the draw itself. I'm just typing in these final names. Make sure I have the full list of everyone who's in on it. Sign you up, Evie? Yeah, you've certainly qualified to be signed up. More than a little bit. There you go. Okie koki. Let's grab all these names and put them into a spinner. It will be a moment whilst I type this all together. Because again, this system is completely not automated so far. And I am not knowledgeable in anything code to actually make it automated. So give me a moment. <laughs> Oh, blimey. Alright, got Tano in once. We have got Lin the pin in five times. Oh, I've accidentally broken it. Let me fix it. There we go. In five times. We have got Zomtronic in with four tickets. We've got Marsh Noob as one. We've got Kisselis with three today. One, two, three. We have got Shenzhou has two. We have got Terry on Twitch has two. The Lion of Khmer has one ticket. And what a friendly lion they are. Or a pastry, that's two. Evie came in with four out of nowhere. Very surprised, last minute tickets there. Shaf has one. And Madshoz. Best I can do on that name, has one. I think that is everyone. I want to say that's everyone. Yeah, that's everyone. All right, cool. But this is our final spinner. That is a lot of names on here today. Good God. Uh, one of you is going to be enjoying that rifle ribbon. Who's it going to be? We're going to find out in three, two, one. The winner is Terry on Twitch. Terry on Twitch, are you still here with us? Because you have just become today's winner of the ribbon of raffle draw, my dude. And congratulations. Well, what was that? Was that with one ticket? I was with two tickets. Og indeed. Terry, what is your username in Warframe? What is your PC account's username? I'll be able to get this sorted to you straight away. But to everyone else, that is all we have got time for in terms of a stream for today. But don't go anywhere just yet. I'm going to send you on over to another part of the Warframe community. Terry on Twitch, say I'll message you. Yeah, you can direct message me on Twitch, but I need to get your username on Twitch just to make sure it's not someone else sending you the mess a message. It has happened before. Someone tried after a stream to claim they were the person who won. So just confirm your username for me, please. Let's see, who do we want to give a raid on over to today? I'm just going to have a look as to who is active on Warframe. Uh, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Hmm. Da, 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 da. I don't actually recognize half of these names I see active at the moment. So that's interesting. There's a lot of new people going around, or at least people I don't recognize for streaming. So let's take... This one. I'm just going to get through the adverts on the stream and then I'll set up the raid. Just make sure it's all good. 
that has been a fun one. Uh, Terry, please do confirm for me. I've had a message come through from a terrifying on here. Is this you? Terry, please confirm your username, otherwise I am not going to be trading with that person. I need you to confirm it. Everyone else, let's go give a raid over to Queen Pornzilla. Wonderful name, isn't it? There we go. Raid is active and going through. All join on that. We want to give a bit of love, a bit of life to another part of the Warframe community. And I will see you guys again, I hope, on Friday, as we're going to be having some Among Us then. Otherwise, we've got more Warframe on Sunday. That's all for my now, though. So I'll catch you guys later. Bye-bye.